All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to a um, special event, um, Dawn Patrol uh, with Mitchell Land, um, author of the Next War War Game series, um, very popular board game series uh, over the years. So just before we before we dig in, um, Mitchell, I don't know if you want to just kind of give us the lay of the land of Next War. Um, how did, how did we get here? How did, in like 30 words or less, how did we get right. here to second edition? Right. Next war Poland. Go for it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, over the, over the years, obviously it started in, in, uh, as a remake of crisis Korea, 1995, uh, which became next war Korea. And then just kind of kept building from there. And so searching around for different areas, um, potential, you know, interest to modern warfare, Next war, Poland in the Baltic area in particular was a hot topic at the time, especially that Swalky Gap. And so that's where that came from. And then obviously, you know, once it went out of print, we um, worked to update some things and that's where second edition came from. So got a few more, a few more updated units and toys and, and things like that. So, so just, um, uh, again, probably uh, 30, 50 words or less or whatever, just, is, is this is this your primary and only game series uh just how did you get into this industry in general it, so yeah i mean i've spent most of my time on on next war obviously i took a detour and, and helped gene and you know together we worked on the silver bayonet remake mm -hmm. um, tentatively it'll be a series right we're still searching around for that second game in the series but yeah primarily um spending most of my time on next war um I've dabbled in, in scenario writing for other systems, but not nothing, you know, big, huge, important uh, or anything like that. So. So the uh, original impetus for this was primarily just for a game, a game you always, you know, the, the, the infamous, infamous, the game I always wanted to play. Yeah. So I had started playing crisis Korea in 1995 and really liked it. And when I noticed that, um, GMT was working on a remake. I got super interested and started giving a whole bunch of unsolicited advice until Gene <laughs> Billingsley finally said, look, if you're that interested in it, why don't you just do it? So that's how that <laughs> That's how most games are developed, right? Right. Uh, okay. Um, I, don't know if we, I don't know if you want to frame this tournament scenario a little bit about for what's going on. We'll go yeah. Um, so it really, it stems out of um, there is actually a Suwalki Gap scenario in the game, but it's a standard game scenario. And several years ago, uh, somebody had created an advanced game version of that scenario, um, just just for a, 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 you know fan made scenario, just for um, on its yeah. own. And year or so ago, I thought, you know, that's a really good idea. Um, how can I frame because because part of the problem is the advanced game is so big it just takes a long time to play. Yeah. And yeah, um, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but it, it's hard to learn the game if you have to set up the entire campaign game and then play through it in order to figure out how to play the game, right? So mm -hmm. I took a stab at converting that that fan made scenario into a you know, I call it a tournament scenario. I mean the primary purpose is really to teach the advanced game. Um, so uh -huh. you pull all the levers and, and push all the buttons that you would normally push in the advanced game. Except in this case, there's no naval um, stuff because it's all all land battle. Uh -huh. but primarily, you're going to get to do everything in the advanced game that you normally would, but in a much smaller space um, uh, so that it's a little bit more manageable. I mean, the goal would be for two, obviously, well, I'll, I'll say it. The goal would be for two competent players to get through this scenario in four hours or less, which is technically doable but you have to already understand the game okay. but for really the primary goal is for you to learn how to play the advanced game to get good enough at it so that you could then use it in a tournament setting all right yeah Potentially. yeah yeah all right um so i have in front of me i i've pulled out the advanced sequence of play i assume this is still valid <laughs> right meaning <laughs> <laughs> just just in what we're about to do i'm assuming there's not much different than than what we're about to do because no, no. All, the, the, all the advanced sequence has been pretty solid i think yeah when i ran comes out we're switching 
switching the order of two things in the reorganization phase just because they make more sense that way but you know fundamentally it doesn't really change a whole lot it's really to cover an edge case that was highlighted that was, that that was going to be my next question where where to next so you're saying iran yeah so iran iran well iran was on the slate uh we put that kind of on the back burner to get next uh taiwan second edition out the door so we've been spending a lot of time getting that in shape for play testing so right. we're going to probably go to play testing general play testing for taiwan second edition relatively soon uh, and then we'll we'll turn our sights back to um iran pretty much just getting it in a line with the new with the second edition you know series rules or, or any any significant game specific rules of note uh, you mean for, for Taiwan, you mean? Yeah, for Taiwan. Yeah, yeah so yes, there's going to be this concept of beach defenses. Um, mm -hmm. they, they've they've really upped their game there recently. Um, the order of battle for the for the uh, for Taiwan has changed significantly um, in their tier awesome. system of of how they um, are organizing their their troops. So that that'll be a very significant change. And you know, Chinese PRC have. Uh, consistently upgraded their yeah, improve their and mobs. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna have, yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna change so much from an order of battle perspective. They're just yeah. gonna have a little bit more capability. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Um I had also pulled out I, I don't know if you're familiar with this expanded advance. I probably won't I probably won't refer to it. I did want to show people that there are some other some other flow charts out there that this one is pretty good, but I don't know if you've even seen that one. Um, uh, that one I don't think I have, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot. But I'll, I'll stick to the I'll stick yeah. to the official quotation marks, uh, and we'll kind of just kind of go go through it slowly, and yeah, and we get there, we get there. If we don't finish the turns, it's okay. Yeah, uh, I figure we'll go to at least you know noon Eastern here if you have the time. That is sure, yeah. And, uh, yeah, really, and yeah. like I said, it's the the idea is just to highlight what goes on in the advanced game. So, yep. All right, and, so and, let's get. You know, it's funny you you pull that up because my, my my the first advice I always give to new players is follow the sequence of play. It's yeah. a very procedural game. If you just go step by step, you you can't go wrong. So, yes, yes, and you have very good keying. Uh, bless you, bless you <laughs> for very reasonable keying i i haven't seen anything that hasn't been keyed properly so yeah i, we I tried i mean <laughs> i'm i'm um yeah uh I, I don't think i i don't think i could i don't think i could do this without it so right. um yeah it's cool it's very good all right so yeah. let's get cracking i guess um sure. so uh, 10 words or less weather phase go yeah so well obviously so in in this scenario the weather is set because otherwise yeah. you know if you ended up with a storm turn it would kind of really really mess with things but normally you would roll for the weather um if you look at the main strategic display there's a weather track and it's just a die roll um depending on one of the early decisions before you start is is it spring summer winter and that'll have a die roll modifier associated that with that weather so, track if you don't want to yeah, uh, it's in the strategic display, which is next this to one? the dead pile. There we go. Yep. There we mm -hmm. go. Whoa. Okay, there we go. And it's down there in the lower left area. Right. Yeah. All right. And... Yep, right there. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so if you, you know, depending on what season you choose, it's going to have a die roll modifier for the weather, and then it's just a straight die roll. And that does have some movement effects if it becomes storm, um, some air knock-on effects uh, in terms of what can fly or how capable your planes become or don't become <laughs> or right. incapable right. Of, you know if they're not all weather planes they don't do so well very good all right i there are also some naval effects which again you don't have to worry about here so uh, uh so initiative um, yeah initiative phase um again in this scenario it's set um, just to put some structure on it, normally you would, um, well, so the first turn is always going to be set for initiative anyway. Um, yeah. Most of the belligerent is going to have the initiative. The, once the game begins, um, after, after the set number of turns of, of initiative, you know, assigned initiative end, it's based on VP, right? And so there's a, there's a VP threshold that you have to earn in order to be able to get initiative. 
if neither side earns that, then it becomes a contested turn, which and, if you look at the sequence of play, it'll cut out a bunch of the sequence of play, right? So, um, you know. And that is, um, those thresholds are determined at a scenario level. By scenario, or, yeah. So, yeah, 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 you know, in the in the advanced game, it's always, you know, and do we I always make up numbers, you know, it might be 11 for the strategic surprise and 15 for tactics or whatever, right? So if you don't earn that many VP in the previous turn, you can't get initiative. Okay, I can't remember where you and you default to what's called a contested turn. Okay. And normally, you're always going to have an initiative turn after a contested turn unless you happen to tie in VP, which is rare. I have seen it happen a couple of times in India-Pakistan because that particular game is a very low VP scoring game. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Uh, and then the UN resolution die, which I think is ignored on this. Yes. Yeah. You don't worry about it here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the games early on, it, it was more important, but a lot of the games since then it's, it's been kind of a moot point. So. And I do appreciate the fact that <laughs> do appreciate the fact that this includes all the rules, no matter if the GSR. Correct. Ignores it. So very good thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Yeah. ED, right. EDP. Electronic yeah. Electronic detection. detection. So this is the first phase where we're actually going to do something in the scenario. Um, by scenario rule, each side gets three attempts. In the normal game, it, it's it, it's broader than that because we're trying to just focus on this one part of the front, right? You, you're only going to get so many of those attempts, and really three might be too many. But um, the the purpose for electronic detection, that's cell phone intercepts or you know radio intercepts or whatever, its primary use is to find HQs. Um, in the case of the allies, you can also use it to find artillery. Um, so if you look... Um, at the tournament scenario map, the Russians yes. have one rocket artillery. So, so for uh, sorry for all the newbies, you you might say uh, also mention that we do this because units cannot. Although you can see each counter or unit on the map, they cannot be seen and attacked. Correct. Uh, hey, HQs, HQs, and artillery cannot be attacked unless they're detected. Yes. Oh, by the way, I but, should have I should have introduced Tom, our our Polish yeah. wargaming friend. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was obliged. It was obligatory. I had to I had to let Tom. Yeah, to the people who world. watch you know me, but yeah, I I, I, I think, but but uh, Michael Michael should know me at least a little from the Discord. Yeah. Uh, next what Discord server? I yeah. sometimes. From I'm something. sorry, you were you were pointing out a rocket, you know, uh, like an MORS. Yeah, but so like, land because land units are also not seen. It depends on the on your air recon, right? Which is dependent on the amount of air superiority you have. Generally speaking, yes. In this particular game, uh, no, yeah, because both know. sides are um, basically uh, drone capable. So combat units uh, are yeah, almost are always detected. Yeah. It's HQs and, re and uh, artillery still have to be detected by electronic detection or by being adjacent. Right? Yes. Um, you're always you're always detected if you're adjacent to somebody, um, but you can also find them with uh, special forces recon, which we'll get to eventually. Um, yep. But the electronic detection phase is just kind of a. Yep. a so important is if part. you don't detect them, you cannot bomb them. Correct. You can't strike. <laughs> you can't raid them. Yeah. And strike includes cruise missiles and air and helo and all that kind of stuff. All right, so please point out to me where the EDT is. Where is the electronic detection tail? Sorry, I'm, I'm vassal. Mm. So it will be on the advanced game tables. Um, so we don't have that here. I gotta go back to the. Let's see. Oh yeah, sorry. It won't be. It won't be on the map. It'll be in the charts and tables. Oh, no, it, it's yes. Uh, it's the advanced. The one next to you, Saf Random. Uh, two, two, three to the right. Here we go. Okay. You mean the one that looks like charts and play aids? Okay. Yes, the, yeah, exactly, yeah, this yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly this one. Exactly the one that like charts and play aids. Not, and you want yeah. the advanced, advanced charts. Yep. Yep. I'm there. And then the inner. Right. So that particular yeah. table happens to be on inner. There you go. Yep. Yeah, the very upper electronic right. detection top right. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, all right. So both sides rolls this yeah. three times, or so I'm sorry, uh, I didn't hear. Uh, how many times do we roll this? So, in, this? in in the scenario, it's right now it's set to three per side, right? All right, um, yeah, that's fine. 
technically you alternate um i think it actually says non-allied first um i think it actually, was it pretty specify. much okay, well, here's here's the non-allied so here i'll just uh yeah so especially so you're, that oh sorry go on i was gonna say your goal is to start looking for you know the mnd northeast um the 18th hq or the and am i okay so i apologize yeah. i rolled before i even thought so um now am i picking just a target heck uh, so so i know where all the darn pieces are anyway right this, these aren't Correct. blocks right so we're always going to know where they're at but, but as Tom was saying before, I, I won't be able to target it unless it's detected, right? So this is very for HQs, you can, you can target a regular combat unit, but at HQ or an artillery, you have to detect it before you can target it. All right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, right, so, so what you're looking you for know. is either Probably. this one or this one. Those are the only two allied HQs on the map. Okay. Yeah. All in right. HQ, uh, and from what I remember, you can try multiple times. Correct. To yes. One if, you yeah. if you miss it, you just you can just roll again. It doesn't matter, right? Okay. So I'm going to just try to detect this one real quick. I rolled a four. I'm assuming that's a detection. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. So now so four, it's four or less is the target number. It's normally three, but because the Russians are involved, you get it. Is there yeah. is there something I need to? Oh, wow! Look at all this. Uh, yeah. Right click. Ah, there we go. Markers detected. All right. There we go. I just yeah. did it. Yep. And then I'll and then, and then you go right. Yes. And I am going to try to detect your artillery right here. Okay. And I miss. Okay. Then I guess I'll go for the uh, the yep. other HQ here. Yep. And boom, no. Uh, Unless there is some sort of DRM on that, which I uh, there is, but you need to get to oh, but you need to get to three. Yeah. So no. All right. So that's not detected. But that was my second turn. Now you go. Correct. So I'm going to go for the artillery again. As Tom mm -hmm. said, you can continue to do that, and now it's detected. So you I'll definitely got it. So yeah. if you want me, I can mark that. Yep. All right. Oop, maybe you need to mark that. Yeah. Either way, doesn't matter. All right. Whatever. Um. All yeah, right. Then my third attempt. I guess I'll go for that second HQ again. Yep. Boom. Got it. Yep. All right. And now for my third attempt, what do I want to do? Um. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for this guy, fourth guard's tank, and I will fail. So there you go. Electronic detection is done. Okay. Very good. All right. So now we are to the first special ops. So because it's an initiative turn, the initiative player will get to do all of his special ops before anything else happens, right? So if you go over to the right hand side and up a little bit you'll see the second operations that's when i get to do mine uh -huh. uh, number six up there right so in a contested turn we would both do them in that number six spot but because it's an initiative turn you get to go first so basically you get to use your sof to try to shape the battlefield before lots of other stuff happens right specifically the air game in this case but yes um so sof you have um two markers and they are over here right okay. there yep um one is russian one is uh belarusian the number on there is their targeting value so it's not a dial modifier for anything it's if you happen to do a targeting mission you'll either put a minus one if it's belarusian or a minus two if it's russian yep. your sof can do a lot of things they can so they can also do recon so in other words say you had failed with your electronic detection rolls on those uh -huh. you could send an sof mission in to do a recon to try to find the HQ and detect it. Um, because they are now detected, you could send your SOF against those guys to do one of two things or both. You could target it, which is gonna help all additional strikes against it, or you could mm -hmm. raid the HQ. Um, one or the other? Uh, you can right. do both. Yeah, you, okay. only one, one mission per, right? So in other words, you can only have one recon mission or one raid mission or one target mission against an HQ, but you could do all three if you had enough SOF to do it. Now, obviously, if it's not detected, you have to detect it before you can target it or rate it. Right. right. Um, All right. So, so if it, so if they're in this phase, I get to, I, I would just choose one of these markers, correct? And correct. And bring yeah. it. Just correct. Bring so it you can the... also, and you can target any kind of unit, really. Um, obviously, you're going to get more bang for your buck out of, of an HQ. Right. You can also, you can 
You can raid installations, which include air bases. Um, you can raid airfields, helicopters that are not based in an air base or an airfield. You can raid them directly. So, for instance, both Allied head HQs are not based in air bases. They're based in cities, so you could technically raid them. Um, they're they're a little bit more vulnerable that way, um, but they're also not that easy to raid. So. <laughs> Right. Um, okay. You can right. also raid the air defense track with them, with the SOF. So you could raid my detection or SAM values um, with them. Um, you can try to detect the supply depot. You can do a recon on that, uh, which the supply yeah. depot in this scenario is a VP for the non-allied side. Uh, they're hard, pretty hard to destroy, though. Uh, but you can't, you can't even start on it if you don't know where it is. But right. Okay, so we we've we've obviously detected both of these, um, yep. and you're saying I can I could raid and target this HQ? Is that correct? Uh, yes, but a counter can only do one thing. So if you want to raid yes. and target it, you'd have to send both counters. Okay, um, but it kind of depends on. So again, you know, the goal throughout the game is to give players lots of choices to do so that they are prepared, yes right um <laughs> yes and i like that a lot of so things far. you can do it's it's how do you want to you know what's your overall plan and what's how do your you goal and then and how do you want to obtain it or how do, how do you how do you want to sequence it in a way that the right. other guy might not yeah. might not guess <laughs> right maybe <clears throat> or at least not be able to counter um so again no strategy here <laughs> we're not dealing with tactics yet yeah uh, we're dealing with just yeah. learning the rules okay so let me in the game so let me just let me do a raid with the SOF um, Neg Two One. Which are these the Belarus or? That's the Russian. The brown is Russian, Russian, black yeah, is so Belarusian. Black is Belarus. Belarus. All right. So uh, and no and no Wagner, no Wagner crazy pieces, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. So okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just uh, for for stars. I'm going to do a raid with the the Russian. Special. Yeah, but you, but you need to declare all of the self yeah, operations you, you before you resolve them. Okay. Interesting. And, and, and I will say that by scenario rule, you get a free raid on the on the air defense track anyway, so you don't have to necessarily assign that to that. Yeah. And so where did that come from? Can... I'm sorry. Why did I get that? It's just by the for the scenario. It, right, it's smart. Okay. Simulating that there's other stuff going on, right? All right. Well, so re not remind me. Special of that. Rules we'll give you. All right. So um, I'll do that in the Belarus. Will ah, what the hell? Why don't we target this one with the Belarus ones? Okay. Just for just for variety, really more sure. than anything. Okay. All right. So then, what do I? Which table do I need to look at at that point? So you need to find the SOF CRT, which you know you have to go back it's, to the it's, table. I think it's somewhere on the same. Yes, here on or on the other side of this one. Yeah, go to the. It's the third one in. From the, from the left. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, so. All right. Here we go. All right. So we're on a raid. Yeah. So you're uh, raiding. H. Which ahead. one were you raiding? F F again? First of all, ch check what terrain you are raiding in. Yeah, because that I defines. Just didn't know if I could yeah. yeah, you were you were today. raiding this one, right? Yes, correct. So I would, I would say you probably want to switch those. These two. Yeah, because from a targeting, because you were going to target. Yes. That minus two is better than that minus one. Okay. All right. That's. Uh, I just didn't know if that was. That's, I didn't that's, know if that was the exact thing. thing. I didn't, yeah, that's cool. Thank you for that. And that's what we're here for. Show yep. you what the, the difference is uh, and right. how to learn from it. All right. So um, but Tom, Tom was correct. The first thing you want to do is find the terrain that the HQ is in. Yes, because because you find the row by the terrain type. So you look is there what, a way to like? At, is there a way to temporarily hide the pieces? There should be. I think it's there. We go. The, <laughs> oh. All right. You mean this thing that says. <laughs> all right so all right so yeah so that that's open terrain them. and the city is i think city gives you modifier because city yeah, yeah. If, if you see at the right drms there is a modifier for hex contains yeah city yeah all right so it's going to be a neg there then what right, yeah, so, so, so it's, it's flat it's it's flat terrain right and so, you find... yeah so you find flat terrain and then you find the target of your raid which in this case is an hq yep. yeah so you're in the very and... first column yep which happens to be right. the worst 
Yep, yeah, of course. That was that I. <laughs> but like Tom pointed out, though, there's die roll modifiers on that roll, right? So you get a minus yeah, one right. for being in a city, but because it's garrisoned or occupied by at least a brigade, because that, yeah. there's that other Polish brigade in there, it's a plus two. So you're going to be a net so plus, plus one. one. Okay, so net plus one. Here's my roll. I rolled a one. Ooh. You're lucky. Normally would have been good. Enough. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're almost lucky. Okay. <laughs> had I not had I not had that brigade there and left that yeah. HQ uncovered, then that would have uh, put a strike one marker on. Yeah, you would scot them. Okay, so that was unsuccessful. You're saying correct? Because I because so now I... though you get to roll for the survival of your SOF team. Yep. That yeah. is just below the CRT the SOF survival. Did I... Okay. Here we go. Yep, I see it. All right, we're good. Then you're gonna be plus one for a raid, but you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just go back to the use box and they're done. Okay, and we were doing that here. Okay, we're okay. Hold on, hold on. sorry, it's just the <laughs> yeah, that's thing, <laughs> just give me a second, I'll get it back to where. Yeah, the full map actually has some right click keys that help, but that doesn't work on this map yet. Sorry, I just figured right. we'd rather be zoomed in a little bit at least. All right, so um, so we're here for uh, a targeting. Yep. Right? So if you pull that chart up again, yep. yep. You want to yep. go all the way over to the right, where the tar right. where targeting is sideways. Ah, here we go. Green yeah. doesn't matter in this case. You're just is... rolling the die against that value, which basically is four or less. And is there any? Uh, there's no. There are no targeting DRMs. Nope. No, okay. Targeting is pretty simple. Yeah, I'm Doesn't just saying maybe matter. bad weather or right. something like that or something. But all right, so I got two, so I got it. Yeah. All right, so then is so there you, a yeah, that, there yeah. is a marker? Yeah, you should right I just, click on the word. HQ and go to markers, and there should be a targeting minus two, I think, somewhere in there. Oh, perfect. Yep. Nice. And then roll for survival again. All right. Very good. I got a seven. I, I guess that, that is going to eliminate him. All right. Sorry, folks. Uh, just send the inventory then. Uh, I would just put him off to the side or over in the eliminated box because you will eventually yeah. get reinforcements back. Yeah. But there we go. All right. We're good. And then take you get to take your free roll against the air defense track. So. You can target either the SAMs or the detection marker. And this is just a free, you don't use a marker. It's just a free roll. You don't roll for survival. It's just, you're just rolling for it, right? And that oh, chart okay. is in the, if you're looking at the SR, CRT, it's yep. right in the middle. It's the line. So kind of like, no, sorry, go back up. Yeah, it's, it's the line it's that, dividing it's that the middle, right very the middle column with the sideways. Ah, column. here we go. Yep. yep. Okay. So detection, uh, plan, SAM, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I guess I'll, uh, the I'll only modifier that. there is there is an automatic plus one if you're targeting the SAM marker, um, but none against the detection marker. All right, I'll go against detection. Got a two. So I got it, right? Uh, yeah, and that should be a minus one, I think. Yes, right? and that's degrading my radars. Yep. There you go. Interesting. So Take a lot into account here. Very good. All right. Yep. Um, and that's first SOF. Yeah, there you go. And then it rolls to... Ah, Ooh. okay, we go right into air naval. Right. So this, and so, you know, I was talking about shaping the battlefield. In the larger context of the game, the reason the first SOF comes first is you. if you happen to raid an air base and put strike mm -hmm. on there, that affects my sortie rate, which means I can't put as many planes up. Right. Um, mm -hmm. In this scenario, it doesn't make as much, it doesn't have as much impact because, again, yeah, this is a small microcosm with a much f wider front, right? But in the larger game, that's, that's a consideration to take. Um, but it also allows you to set, like, the detection and the SAM and, and hit some of that stuff. So anyway, that's, that's why that comes first. Um, so in this in this one, we're going to count. Well, it's beginning of the game, so no, and you didn't strike any um, 
air bases or anything. So there's you don't right. have to worry about the first step there where you're I'm doing the A counting the strike markers. Okay, so right. then... strike markers and destroyed markers affect the sortie rate of uh, that player. So say say you had a, a marker on this air base in Poland, right? I would have mm -hmm. to move one of these guys to flown. Um, yeah. and you can no longer participate in, in anything. This, um, this happens later when air bases get right damaged or destroyed. Correct. And, and again, in the much larger game, it happens a lot. So <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. By the way, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the fact of you you using your alt click. If you can if you can be the mover and pointer, and then I can show the rules uh, at least for okay. now. But yeah, sure. especially in this oh. more complicated part. Yeah. All right. Um, so then what happens? So we can skip all that stuff. But really, um, part of the, the, the really the the first part of that is just hey take account of any damage you have and that affects the number of planes that you have available to fly the air superiority missions then we're both going to put units in this air superiority box right here right um and the way that works is whoever has the AWACS advantage which happens to be the non-allied player AWACS advantage of one the person without advantage places theirs in there first so you get to see what i'm sending up for air superiority because you have a, right now you have better AWACS coverage, right? Uh -huh. if, it, if it happened to be zero, we would do it simultaneously, which arguably is a little hard to do in, in Vassal. Um, it's actually not that simple to do in uh, live play either. A lot of people will just stick a box or something up in between, right? Or, or right. I've heard people say, yeah, I don't really care. I'm just putting these up anyway. So, <laughs> um, but, well, but that's anyway. how it usually goes. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, and in this case, there's, I mean, you know, we, we both have a very limited set of the air forces that we have available anyway. So, um, I will put up the tornadoes because they have long range and I will put up my MiG 29s. Do I want to fly them? 16. Um, you know what? I think I will try to contest their superiority. So I'm going to fly all five of those. But I will leave my SU 22s back. That's that's probably good time to describe what each value at the bottom means. Oh yeah, good point. Good call. Um, <laughs> let me let me zoom in. Oh, I can't. If I zoom in, it doesn't matter because you're not seeing mine. Um, but yeah, if you're looking at a counter, so actually, if you yeah. would mouse over one of the the, either the Germans or the UK, the Germans are the gray ones. Um, so that on it pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a typhoon. Um, in the upper left is an a, which stands for all weather. So, you know, it's an all weather aircraft. If it happened to be stealth, it would also have an S. Mm -hmm. So for instance, an F 22 will have a S right. Mm -hmm. Um, in the upper right is the range of the aircraft. Most of the time, that has no almost no bearing on play. Um, in the Pacific, it does because you're talking about huge ranges, right, or two, huge distances, and so tracing across sea zones and things it, it matters. Here, the only place it, uh, I'm trying to think, I'll probably I'm probably going to say it wrong. I think the whole, only place it really matters is if you're trying to fly out of the North Sea off of a carrier. Yeah, it's, it's mostly in, in Taiwan. It affects a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It cannot cannot fly from Japan all the way with correct some yeah. aircraft. Right. So so here you don't really have to worry too much about the range. Um, the number underneath the L is the pilot skill, also training and and things like that. Um, lower the better. So it, plus two is really bad. Minus two is really good, and zero is just you know average. Yeah. And, and then along the bottom, you have air to air. Uh, on the left, you have combat support in the middle, and you have a strike value on the right. And the number of asterisks is um, so two asterisks on your air to air means you have long range missiles, long range air, -air missiles. One means you just have standoff missiles. Mm -hmm. um, and then none means you have none. So like, for instance, the um, the SU-22 has no standoff capability at all. Right. It's just there's no asterisks. Um, it can only dogfight, basically. Correct. It can only dogfight. And it can't do a it can't do a standoff strike either, right? Um and so that's the the asterisk on the three on the typhoon means it can do a standoff strike, uh, which has ramifications depending on the target, but mostly it will prevent you from uh, undergoing triple A fire. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Interestingly, and little trivia side 
type in the original Crisis Korea game, you only had a certain number of standoff strike missions you could conduct, and so it was a finite resource. Mm. Um, you got rid that of has since changed. Although I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, mm -hmm. they're running out of precision missiles, <laughs> so maybe that wasn't such a bad idea. But anyway, you might be able to apply it with a different ruling, right? Yeah, it's kind of yeah. A different um, so. Um, and thanks, thanks, Tom. That was a good call out. Uh, so that's it. So when it when it comes time to match up, we'll talk about how those interact. Um, mm -hmm. But so in because minute. because you have AOX advantage, I put mine up first. What's that? Yeah, in a minute we will see when. Yeah, Russians will take our bomb. Right. Immediately. So, at this right. point. That's and, right. and rule of thumb, like if you look at your um, SU twenty sevens and your MiG thirty ones. You notice they have one value, and that's air to air. They're only good at air superiority. That's the only thing they can do. All right. So yes, and and another so important ahead, note. Now. Sorry, sorry, I interject. Another important note: the guys that you sent here to air superiority mission, they won't be able to perform strike or combat air support. Correct. Okay. Although they also the guys that you're sticking in here that we're both sticking here, they are the only ones who can intercept or escort missions exactly so if you want or, to perform any yeah. support or strikes yeah. you need to hold these guys at the back obviously you won't send well okay for, for russians and belarus it's it's pretty easy who is go who's staying and who's going right up but for but for nato you might for instance would keep up the typhoons in the back to perform Ground, air to ground missions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. These are these are very and even the F 16s right? They're very capable. Yeah. 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 Aircraft. But in this case, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to lose the air superiority mission, right? You, you pretty it's much, big, Peter. You, know, you, you send you send every MiG 29s right now you have, and you keep yeah exactly right. like this. Okay. And maybe just keep one back to escort. No. No, your those... escorts fly out of here. So if you wanted yeah. to be an escort, yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't. I, I thought that these got these folks would be locked. They will be the first they, they will be intercepting, and any guy that stays here can fly escort missions. Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's this, convenient. Yeah, yeah the, convenient. The, yes, right. Yeah, but, the planes you put up there become the escort and intercept pool, basically. Well, the ones that survive air superiority. <laughs> yes. Which is coming next. So now that we've got everybody set in the box, now we start allocating to um, uh, the air superiority fight. And again, because you have the AWACS advantage, it flips. You get to pick the first engagement because AWACS advantage is one, right? So you pick the first engagement, which is really, say, say you don't have to do this, but say this is how you want it to, to play out. You want your MiG-29 to go up against the yeah, F-16. You, you you basically the pair engagement. up right. fights. And because your air super your AWACS advantage is one, right, right, you, I, I get that you, part. But but yeah. my yeah, my, but, but, my thing is then how do you how do you manage keeping enough for escorting if you planned on doing a strike in the same? You, you will see. Let, let's yeah. let's play well, along and do yeah, just see. just yeah. so well. Yeah. So you you have to match everybody so in other words because i have five planes you have to at least assign five planes eventually right you could okay. technically hold one out you may or may not want to and we'll talk about that um but that that way you could you could almost guarantee you would have at least one escort or one interceptor left right so if you but we're gonna we're gonna roll a bunch of dice and some of these guys are not going to be here at the end of that so if you didn't want to if you didn't want to put as much into play there is some strategy to not putting this all into play at once like this, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he, here's what I really like about this rule, because the AWAX advantage right now is one in your favor. So you right. pick one of your aircraft and pair it up with one of the NATO aircraft to fight. And then... Uh, and then I'll a, pick one. Yeah, you pick one. But if you had AWAX advantage of two, for instance, you pick mm. up two fights, and then the opponent pick up one. And yeah, again, that's you great. Pick up two fights. So I like that. It's subtle yeah. but simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's subtle but, like, but simple. I just 
Well, I mean, if it, it gets really bad when they have advantage of four, right? Because then you're basically yes. dictating. And I'm sorry. And um, and tell me how that AWAX advantage is manipulated. Or... So, oh, that's good. So if you look here, once we once we roll all those dice after these are matched up, we're going to end right. up with some number of air units left, right? Mm. We're going to compare that as a ratio and then look, like if you look under advantage, right. if the ratio of aircraft is one and a half to one, to less than three to one, it's going to shift the AWACS advantage. Whoever has that advantage is going to shift the in their but direction. By, but by scenario, you can start this off as well differently, right? Well, this, this, yeah, this actually is just sitting there because it's just sitting yeah. there. Okay. We're going to, we're going to set that. Um, well, right. But like, if you, if you wanted to simulate uh, an initial AWACS superiority, you could probably, you could do that by, by scenario. Yes. Correct. Well, that's why this is set to one initially, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That's what I was. That's what I was shooting for. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I like yeah. these. Hmm. So it's now uh, the burden is on you to pick the first engagement. Oh, well, I, and here's the thing. Maybe we should before you should do that. Some of the things we should talk about. So I talked about two asterisks means long range, right? right. One asterisk means standoff, and none means. Um, a dogfight only. Now, none of the planes up here are dogfight only. When we go to combat, we are going to resolve. The double um, asterisk they, say these guys are matched up, right? Right. Because I have a long range capable aircraft, there are going to be three stages of combat. I'm going to fire in long range, and you're not going to fire at all because you don't have long range. Right. Assuming you're still there, we will both fire, and this is simultaneous, we will both fire simultaneous unless one of us gets advantage result. But anyway, we will both fire at standoff right. in a standoff step. If we are still both there, we go to dogfight. In dogfight, the air unit with the higher air-to-air -air value goes first. The only thing that interrupts that order is some of the results on the um, on the air combat table are advantaged or, dis or disadvantaged, really. Well, I guess or, it's advantaged. So or, if I, or after any step, one of the side can just abort. Correct. Yeah. So, for instance, if he fires in long range and gets advantage on this guy, right? Right. And rather than the, the standoff being simultaneous, I'll actually right. fire first because I, I have an advantageous position. Right. Okay. But yeah. at the end of that long range step, before we go to the standoff step, what Tom is saying, you, well, both sides really, but as the disadvantaged side, you'd probably want to do it depending on your goal. You have the option to automatically abort and you would just, yeah. I'm going to abort. Withdraw. Right. Okay. Now, the thing you have to remember about aborting is it takes a, it takes a little while to get back into the fight although in mm, by yeah. scenario rule you get an extra minus two but Let, yeah let's let's go to it Let, let's finish this step and and maybe point by yeah. point <laughs> yeah. Not, not well, i just yeah i wanted to talk about how that combat yeah. works because that it, it informs how you yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah yeah no whether i remember everything you just said is another story. that's okay all right but, uh, so, so so pick pick one and pair it up <laughs> with someone all right, so these guys are pretty powerful from, well, oh, the, the heck, they all are um, with ground. Yeah. And others, okay, I'm just going to kind of go through my logic, ill-fated Ill, Ill or otherwise. Um, I mean, they, these guys are roughly the same, but these guys have the, the longer uh, range potential. These so, I mean, yeah. this, you have a couple different long range. Yeah. Right, this guy has the long range, right? What, so, what I might do is more, some. you got to kind of play it. There's a little bit of probability here too, right? Like right. I might do this, right. this. Oh, yeah, God, but I don't know. no, 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 no. Sorry, St uh, step up with the. You only right now choose one pair. Right. Okay. Because, because my one, one. Because and my now one your two. opponent chooses another one. Right. right. So then I get to choose the next one. Oh, interesting. And I think this is a really good ebb and flow. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think, actually, though, I think I did. I do like that matchup, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because because with MiG thirty one, it doesn't have very powerful weapon compared well, to others. Right, but, but, but this you is can the get. Thing. But but this... if you but if you pair him with, let's say MiG twenty nine of F sixteen, you at least get one free shot. Right. In the long range phase. Right, 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 right. Um. Oh, you mean like here. <laughs> yeah, here you. you yeah, you but, could get but that's one the free thing. Shot at them. This, so, is, this is the mini game within the game. Yeah, this exactly. is awesome. I love this. I can play this all day. <laughs> hey, hey, Tom, by the way, this is the level of complexity I can handle. <laughs> okay. He's a he's a Birds of Prey player. so you Oh, nice. I, I want to play that, but I have not quite 
gotten to it. I, 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 I wouldn't call myself player. I played once. I, I, I made ah. more content for it than I oh, okay. played it, actually. Yeah. But I love this game. We, we can play it one day. Okay, now, Peter, yeah. you, pair, you pair another one. Okay. All right, so let me just talk through it a little bit, and then you can untalk me. You can talk me out of something, okay? All right, so, again, we're, I'm not really looking at this other than the fact about whether I want to take it out or not, right? Everybody's relatively on par at this point, but I'd probably do something like that or maybe even that, right? Because I probably want to right. take out the thing that has more ground. Like, these guys are – like, if I went here – I'm sure. taking less ground capability out, but if I take this guy out, I'm taking out more. Yeah, exactly. Ground capability. Yeah, that's so I probably do that. Yep. Is that reasonable logic? Yeah. Yes. All right. And I think we're gonna put this guy on your Belarusian. Yeah, it's pretty pretty even even Steven, right? But with, now now with you want point. to put yeah you want to put the guy with zero because no sorry with minus one I forget that guy with the yeah minus that's what I was about to is, ask. Can yeah, you tell me again what that that modifier is right there? That yeah. that's it, if you manage to whoop, if you manage to stay till dogfight, you'll get that as a die roll modifier. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's die roll okay. modifier to the dogfight, pretty much. All right, so that was a good move by you, and then and I want that, right? So I do this. Right? It's it's to the dogfight and to the some ground attacks. And this guy's right. then available for. The, so now, this guy is available. A, right. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. You can explain it. Uh, yeah, because now you can put this guy into any of the combats because the the max mm. ratio is you you can put two against one Ooh. aircraft you cannot put three but if you if you have spare aircraft you can assign them to other fights on but i don't have to commit base. that right away you do you not do. need to commit no you need to commit that before fights just right as the fight's about to happen okay no right yeah now. Oh, I'd have or to you like... can withhold him right yeah that's, you, can that's assign... choice. you can you can either double up on somebody or like you were saying, you could just you hold him out and you automatically are gonna he's gonna he's gonna survive air superiority because he's not in it engaged, right? Yep. But it's your choice. Like that's probably not a bad idea to try to double up on one of those type on one of those. Yes, as, especially that the counter can attack only one correct counter at so the quick, time. quick next war series question. Is yeah. this how it always has been? This is pretty well refined. I'm just gonna say that. Is this um, like for the most over? part, yes. Um, more so as the series has grown and <laughs> and honestly, as time has passed, more airframes are becoming um, capable of carrying long range weapons. Um, so the counters themselves have changed, but pretty much this has been in place since since the beginning. Okay. Um, right. In the original, very very original Crisis Korea, the only plane with long range weapons was the F fourteen Tomcat with the Phoenix, right? <laughs> Because the time that might, that might as well have three <laughs> asterisks, right? Right. Um, All right. Oops, there goes a few million dollars. Oh, there goes another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So at this point, let's go back to our phases just to. Yep. So so say. once we got once cool. the matchups are set, then we just resolve air superiority combat. Yeah, and the Two order are. is pretty much irrelevant. Yep. Two, two ways to do it. Um, you can go across and do all long range and then all standoff and then all dog fight. I find it much easier to pick one because you cannot re-engage. Yeah. So you might as well just pick one yeah, and resolve and it all the way. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it, that's, it, that's easier. Faster, right. And you don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're both at this point. Um, you go first because you have a higher air rating? No. 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 Simultaneous, yeah. Ah, the, the you, go, rating, you go first by air rating in dogfight. Only in dogfight. Okay. Right, so the so. first stage is always long range. We're both long range, so we're both going to fire, and there are going to be which um, air com fight. and I'm on the air combat. CRT yeah, air here. combat yeah. differential attacker minus right. target. So what you're looking at though is you compare your your air to air with mine. Yeah, and you'll be on the minus one column. Okay, but you're I'll be, be on the plus one column. One. Right. And if, are there any modifiers? Any other modifiers? Uh, not right. for this, no. No. It's only plus three if there is a storm and right. plus two if you attack aircraft that is holding bombs. Right. Yeah. In this uh, I mean I mean if you are holding bombs and yeah, if you're intercepting, right. Or being intercepted. Rather. Okay. So roll away. Here I go. One roll. Yep. We're gonna go left to right on this. We'll do all the all the rest. Well we'll just we'll just we'll just do this one combat. And then no, we'll do let's, let's do one combat and then. Okay. So, yeah, I'm a seven on the plus one, which is nothing. 
I'm a five on the neg one, one, which is also, is also unfortunately nothing. Right? Correct. So yeah. that was long range step. Then we go to standoff right. step. Okay. By definition, because we have two asterisks, we also have standoff. Yeah. Weapons, but, right? but before it, any side that would want, they can abort and go home. Correct. Okay. Either, either, either side, side could abort right now. I, I'm not going to abort, but I'm not. I'm right. not. It, 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 you know, you may I'm just saying because I, I'm just saying because we usually when I play Taiwan with my friend we forgot about it. Doctrine, and, baby. <laughs> and, yeah, and our attrition in air was terrible. <laughs> right. Doctrine, we never stop. All right, let's yeah. go. Uh, all right, there uh, we so go. Can, it's literally the same thing, right? Yeah. Except yep. that neither one oh. of us are rolling well. So now okay. we go yeah, to and, and NATO has uh, and the Russians have modifier, right? Because if you look at the stand of the RMs, you get plus one if you are non NATO, Japan. Ah, sorry, Russia is there too. Yeah, plus. Russia's in there too, yeah. Now the Belarusians get that plus one. Yeah. Because they don't have so as would. fancy missiles. They, they don't have as fancy missiles. We both had plus one, but we're which no, you don't have plus one. It's if you are not NATO oh, no, 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 or no, Russia. No, I didn't see that. Right. No, I'm sorry. All right. Um, okay, so we're now so, at the dogfight. So that was standoff. Again, both sides get the chance to abort if you want. Hmm. We're going to go to dogfight. And this one, I am going to fire first because my air to air value is higher. And I will okay. get the minus one on my counter this time. Peter so you have the option Peter to abort before we roll, but that's up to you. Uh, doctrine, we're going for it. <laughs> <laughs> You should have left. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. so that becomes a <laughs> two. You are damaged and aborted. So you flip and yeah. you place so your guy in aborted. Yeah, I think it's reduce, status, status reduce or something like that. Yeah, so reduce. Yeah. Right. Um, and then he goes to the aborted box. Okay, I will get him up there. It takes me a little bit because we're zoomed in. Yep. Nope, that's uh, fine. Uh, yeah, and the difference yeah, here is... Where... Oh. Uh, you, you have flown and above flown you have yeah, aborted. Well, there you go and if you can look right. here because even if you abort uh if you i really abort like this from your own will the aborted guys have lesser chance of returning ready yeah that's really yeah, this is really right. well defined this is really good sorry yep you know this already mitchell <laughs> I, I you know i'm yeah. partial hey to hey it. this is why i'm doing this cause right this is how i like to learn games i just invite the rules yep. author yeah, sure. no. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay, so, what, um, what did you what did you did what what did you did to mitchell because your your role was also not, uh, not I just, it was I just, it was it was dog fight so he did not get the role oh right just, right forgot yeah yep. i just did it to see what i would have gotten all right yep. um so, so now nice. we just go to the very next combat, and it's the same thing, except here, because you have two units, you get to fire twice, uh -huh. right? Um, now, let me let me caveat that. I get one long range shot first because neither yeah, of your planes are long range. But right. should they both stay, then you'll get to shoot twice in the standoff. I'll get to shoot once. All right. So this was probably a good maneuver right. because. So now my conundrum pretty... is I can only shoot at one of your planes. So I think I'll take the better odds. I'll do the long range shot against the MiG-29 to see if I can drive it off. Mm -hmm. um, because it'd be on the zero rather than the minus one. Mm -hmm. And I do. Wow. A one so, is also damaged and aborted. So that so it takes as far as the damaged, um it will take I mean, can it repair? Can it repair to full strength? Yes. It, as it's some done? some planes can, some planes can't. Yes, and it costs supply points to repair them. But yes, it, or it, you can merge. Costs... Mm, mm, like mm. if you have two damaged Mig twenty nines, you can mm, mm, you can mm. flip it and and take one off. Yeah, you First can merge off. damaged units, or you can repair them. But repair usually costs it, it costs supply points, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I, I I remember it is very expensive. <laughs> it is. It's two per. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. It strained us a lot in Taiwan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, Taiwan is, is a very supply constrained game, though. Right? Uh -huh. It's yes. a little bit easier in Poland because you have a little bit more supply. Exactly. But in some games, it's it's very straining if you get damaged. Uh, plus, the constituting also keeps these guys on the uh -huh. ground for a turn when they are reconstituting. Right. Oh, interesting. Very good. Okay, so I that like, was. That... I like those subtleties. I like yeah. the, subtle, the subtle, but. Yeah. sincere rules there there are a lot of interactions that take a while to really sink in right all right 
so now you have standoff. Please. Uh, unless he wants to abort, but yes, we have standoff. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and stand. Yeah. Off. Which will be simultaneous. And now it's now it's flipped though because you're on the plus one and I'm on the minus one column because your yeah. error value is better now. It's better. Right, so yeah. Here we go. And with an eight, it doesn't really matter what I what I do. Oh jeez. Uh, and Vassal's random generator yeah. strikes. Yeah, whatever, right? hey, such, such a <laughs> but now you have the you have the chance to return the favor that I did to your MiG thirty one because in dogfight you're gonna I fire. Go. Or I'm gonna stick around just because I want to try to I want to try to swing that that Ewax advantage. But right, you're gonna go. fire first on the plus oh, one yuck. column Not with good. a minus I'm... one die roll because your yeah. pilot skills minus one. Uh, still plus one soft. column. Still not good. It's a damage, right? No, no, it's plus one. You have plus one column because your Sukhoi oh. has five, You're Typhoon right. has four, and you have minus one. So you have plus one column, and you have minus one to your so pilot. Damage. Yeah, yeah, damaged. And... and so if you look across, actually, this is probably worth explaining. If you look across that yes. six, because you, you rolled a, a modified six on the plus one, right? Yeah. And it's an AD slash D. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it says that in the it says this in the notes. The AD value only applies in long range and standoff, and so you can't on on those you don't actually damage somebody on an AD slash D in long range and standoff. You just get an advantage in the next round. The D nice. in that column in that instance or in that sorry in that result only applies in dogfight. All right, so we're, because we were in dogfight, you were damaged. Yeah. Yes, because because, yeah. because AD if if you perform long range or stand up fight and you get ad meaning advantage result you get an edge in the next phase correct you fire first no matter what and so at yeah. this point we can continue yes right now here I, so you didn't abort me you just damaged me so technically i get to shoot back but it's going to be really hard because i'm on the minus three column with a plus one right so i think i need a zero and that is definitely not a zero <laughs> On the, so other hand, stay... on the other hand, the plane survives, so he's still in the box. Yeah, and he will be counted towards the Correct. advantage later. Where did so, my guy go? Not a great result, but not a horrible one either. Yeah. Did... All right. Oh, this guy yep. is here, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um... I just wanted to mark him move so we know we were done with him. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, so then we just move on. Now here, neither one of us has long range. So we go, we skip long range, we go straight to standoff. Um, and this is what Tom was talking about before, because the Belarusians are not in that list of uh -huh. um, things, they get a plus one to their standoff die. So we're both going to be on the zero column, uh -huh. but you'll hit a, you'll get a plus one. And mine my roll. Straight right. so of course you roll fantastically. And then there we go. Man, I roll. <laughs> Just an abort, uh, but you rolled an eight, which becomes a nine. So nothing. All right. So he's yeah. Reporting. So right now this is looking pretty good for NATO. Yes. Go for it. But I may regret it later by not having those F-16s to fly support or whatever, right? So yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to be the same thing, except you no longer have that plus one. We're both straight up on the zero column. Oof. Oh Lord. <laughs> that's zero zero X. No, that's... only damage and aborted, sadly. On the oh, right. uh, but you, uh, no, you only got an advantage, which is not going to apply because you were damaged and aborted. Yeah. All right, so reducing and aborting. Right now, and this is where we were talking about: had you, had I missed, for instance you would have had an advantage result on me. And when we went to dogfight, you would have gone first, even though our air to air values are even uh -huh. because you had an advantage result in the standoff combat. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So in this case, I like that. that's a subtle little, that's a subtle little rule. I like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So here uh, again, we're standoff, but now you'll be on the plus one. I'll be on the minus one. Man, my dice are hot. Mine are lukewarm at best. So a one is just an abort for me. And what'd you get? A five like plus one. That is advantaged for you. So again, again, not to be, you know, I'm, unfortunately, I'm leaving, right? So. Correct. Um, not damaged this time, though. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So this actually turned out to be a very good result for me. Bad. 
pretty bad day for yes uh, okay. so now we go and look at this air superiority chart right no. and we count up the number of planes so i have five to one so five to one plus gives me supremacy oops i don't want that i want that uh and then if you look down here it says move the AWOC, AWACS two so it's going to go one and then two and so the normal marker you flip yeah um i'm gonna have to go pull another one out but because this map really wasn't set up yet uh, we just use these markers so so that flipped AWAX advantage to um nato's favor if and if i can keep building that up it will eventually have other knock on effects but. interesting 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 uh, okay. so that's a cumulative yes over time. yeah i like that yeah it just right. goes up and down the track right? mm -hmm. um that's right, it so back back in the overall we went right. through so we were on step 5.5 .5 there the update awax advantage so the rest of it we can skip because that is all about naval stuff yes yeah so now we're up to the second super second special operations right. and those are going to work relatively the same um i get good. a free shot at your uh air defense track and then i have also two uh, sof one polish and one us that mm -hmm. i use to do things and i think i think we're going to use the us to target this artillery what else do i want to do um that's a good question. You are not Garrison there. I think I'm going to take the poles and I'm going to raid your uh, MI-28. Hmm. Since he's sitting in the city. And, and I realize you didn't have a choice there because I set it up so we didn't waste time setting up. <laughs> it's, it's okay. All right. Um, so, so take us through the charts here. Yep. So uh, no, you want the SOF, which I think is yep. Right there. So we're gonna roll roll for targeting, which is straight up four or less. So this guy is now targeted. Uh, we'll say target two. We'll move that to the top. So we're gonna lose it. I'm gonna roll survival on the US. Uh, one will be fine. There goes to use. So here, so this is something a little bit new. Uh, the terrain is flat. So I'm looking at the top row. And then I'm going to go across until I find Hilo, which is the third column. And I'm going to roll, I'm going to try to strike that Hilo. It's going to be a plus one, I'm sorry, a minus one because the hex contains a city. Um, but there and there is no garrison there because there's no brigades or anything in there so it's just gonna be a minus one on that column and that's still a miss yeah um but survival they do get to go home so they go back and so i'll just and i'll take my free shot over here and i will also try to hit your detection mm -hmm. um, but again that's on that middle column and i think it's also a four or less yeah, it's basically 50 50 genes right uh -huh. yep. and that's nothing so but there's no survival on that that's just a free shot uh right so, so that was still like because seven. this was an initiative because this was an initiative one and not a contested one i don't that, i do not have this correct yeah you don't you don't go again it's just mine you already and, you already had it previously and right. if it's contested then both sides go at the same correct. time now so then we get to go to the lovely strike phase which is very involved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. First thing, alternating non-allied first, allocate nuclear weapons. So we don't want to do that because that's just, you know, nobody wants to do nukes yet. Um, and actually, I don't think they're allowed to in this scenario anyway. So, uh, But both players allocate missiles and cruise missiles. So if you look on the game record track, 
Um, so NATO starts with six ballistic missiles, as does Russia. Russia starts with five cruise missiles, and NATO starts with four cruise missiles. And I apologize. I'm going to have to check the special rules. I think we can both fire two per turn, two of each per turn in this scenario. Yeah, because uh, if I remember correctly, if there is no yeah. special scenario rules, you can basically launch all you have. <laughs> as, um, as... There are limits, um, but they're usually fairly generous. Yeah. Like, I think usually five, or it depends on the number of launchers, or you can also use... So in, in, the, in the wider game... Yeah, I, I, I use... mostly, mostly play Taiwan, and yeah. we couldn't find any limitations there. We only limited ourselves because it was not practical to expand yeah. everything on turn one <laughs> right yeah i think um i want to say it was five or it might even be 10 in taiwan it was there might be a number somewhere or maybe not but yeah maybe and again well, you need to you, you need to declare all of them before you resolve them which correct. is correct yeah important yeah and, and it, it you know at some level it doesn't really matter who goes first um i think just for Say, yeah, yeah, that's order, the right the or, point though. It's still right. not it's still only detected units, correct? Right? Technically. Well, so um which which chart is that on? There is a theater weapon targets list. So on the Yeah, because you, you can attack many right. things, including okay. air bases, air bases, airfields, yeah. which, I would, which I probably would do to get but basically you can you can attack infrastructure with it. Yeah, if you pull up any that known infrastructure, all right. So that had that, pretty much uh, all infrastructure is known infrastructure. Okay, so let's you can, you can say... check it on Google Map if you want. Yeah. If you pull up that SOF chart again and go to the bottom, yep. See that theater weapons yep. target. So that uh, will tell you yeah. what your cruise missiles can target and what your ballistic missiles can target. All right. Um, I think I'll I will target both airfields just for. Here. So, and that's why, so, and this is why I deliberately put these guys in cities. They are not in airfields. So they cannot be targeted by missiles. But destroying airfields gives you victory points and it limits the amount of aircraft that can start next turn. It, it, in the full game, yes. In the ah, in the full game. In this yeah. one, not. Okay. Right. Not even victory points? No. Ah, okay. Yeah, for for because because it's because I'm trying to craft a tournament scenario. I kind of had to turn the uh, sure All right. Bit, right. So it's more about controlling. So so, so just we probably should talk about, it's it's about controlling not... these cities. So right? I can probably like like for my cruise missiles, I'll probably target your artillery if I, if I know of any here. Uh, so cruise missiles can target air bases or the air defense track. I mean, there are other targets, but in this scenario, that's pretty much what they're going to be limited to. The ballistic missiles can target uh, the HQs, and you probably Sorry. definitely want to drop at least one, if not two, on this guy because he's targeted. Right. I thought you can attack regular HQs with cruise missiles. Huh. Is, is that a change from some addition? Because I thought HQ. Oh, which, I'm sorry. Which, I meant. Did I say cruise? I meant ballistic missiles. No, yeah, I, I thought that cruise missiles can attack also detected HQs. They can? Uh, just, a, just a Supreme HQ. Ah, okay, then I, I remember something incorrectly. I thought they could. No, but but there, I, there may have been an errata. Well, I think that was for round artillery, though. But anyway, yeah, they, they could. Okay, no matter. All right, yeah. so. Um, and to both... be it's almost an arbitrary distinction just to give them a distinction? I mean... Sure. But... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and target that H the detected HQ with the oh, target. Oh, so, yeah, I probably should have said, if you go up to the strike... I'm sorry, the counter tray, the strike one, it's right to the left of the A. Yep. And then go scroll all the way down, you will find... Uh, or not, maybe not all the way down, like missile, or halfway down, there's missile targets and cruise missile targets. Mm. There you go. So mm -hmm. you, out and... you mark targets with them. Yeah. And uh, for, for all who are watching, this is this is actually very extended and important phase in the larger games. And attacking infrastructure is very important part of the game. So I have to yeah, declare that... if I wanted to do both. I have to declare that now. Yes. All each each attack you need to declare right now. How many? How many? Who, right. who is I, attacked what... and by how many missiles? 
Right. Right. So I'm doing the detected HQ here with two ballistic missiles, and then okay. um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and mark your your counter down. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And I did. Yeah, it's two two of each per. So your cruise missiles you could fire. Um, yeah, that's again, what I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to determine what. So that's installations yeah. airfield. So so I could. So as Tom was pointing out, I could hit the airfields to, to try to bring. So the only air. the only air base represented on the map is this one. Okay. And the the only point to do that would be if there was a helicopter there and you wanted to roll collateral damage on. Oh, it. I thought it would. You're I not going to get anything in, in the context yeah. of this scenario. It, it's right. not worth hitting, right? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I take it back. I take it back. That is also the only air base from which I can trace air mobile movement. So there is value in restricting NATO's mobility that way. Hmm. All right. So just for giggles, then. Um, but we'll the other target would be the air defense track, but that's a very low odds attack with a cruise missile. All right. So I mean, just whatever. Just for just for again, I'll, I'll do yeah. one cruise here and maybe one on the one on sure. the track. How about that? Sure. Well, and like a, I like I like to point out, people who are playing, you only have five missiles in three turns, and you only fire two per turn, so you might as well shoot off two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's and again, I'm going here. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. All right. So again, it's probably a low probability, but what the hell, doctrine? It is, but that's okay. Um, whatever. But right, if so, you hit, it gives you yeah, good exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that's what, whatever. I'm just trying a few different things. here. All right, so I've done all my I've put out mine, and have we adjusted? Had you adjusted for both of those? Uh, I did, yes. Okay, and then I'll we'll allocate, and then yep, we will go fall. So I need to go find some missiles, and I'm gonna hit this artillery. Two. Now I only have four cruise missiles, so I'm not sure. <sighs> You can only do up to two in each track. I can, right? right. And I'm trying to decide to do it. So you are actually in an airbase here. I might. Now, I'm going to take that low odds, and I'm going to try to knock your detection down, because that is very dangerous for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and expend two on there. All right. Uh, and then we resolve, and you resolve first. So you uh, need to find the strike table, which okay. is below the air combat table. Here we go. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And uh, pretty good amount of DRMs here. All right. Um, yep. Pick one to resolve, and we can walk through that. Uh, we will do the first ballistic on the the, the targeted HQ, the, the targeted and detected HQ down yonder. All right. So here. not unlike the SOF, you're going to find the um, terrain. That they're okay. in. Okay, let's just. Yeah, you, you pretty much work on wooded. this like the so, SOF. Yeah. What is that? Rough woods? That's woods. Uh, here. Flat woods. Yeah. yeah, flat woods. Flat woods. Although for, for a scud, it doesn't really matter. But... All right. So, so you go all the way across, and you'll notice like the type. Three, rows, three rows, it's all the same anyway, right? And then you scud. Uh, are we on because H, you are, other HQ no, no, or what, you what are is not this? Looking, not, now you do not look at target. You look for the right. weapon you are using because right. HQs can also attack with tactical missiles and whatnot. Right. Okay, interesting. So we are Scud. That's Which we'll get to. Yeah, Scud slash missile. Uh -huh. All right. And a very generous column. Not overstack, not high mountain. No. Anything else here? Um. So we could go through them or I could tell you. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. So <laughs> Whatever. One, yeah, one new rule that we are introducing uh, is this concept of theater weapon defense HQs. Some HQs are more equal than others and have better um, mm -hmm. ADA, um, better ADA, uh, especially against theater weapons. Um, and so those would be right now U.S., PRC, Russia, and this happens to be the NATO HQ. So it also gets it right. The MND, the Multinational Division. Northeast HQ. Um, so there's a plus one from that. Uh, there's no city there. I think that's probably going to be it. So just a plus one DRM. Yeah, I mean there there are a lot of lot of diver monitors. The one thing that's I will say, zero baby. <laughs> once you go through it a few times, you'll know which ones to worry about and which ones not to worry about. 
right? Yeah. So I got to. Oh, I'm sorry. We missed we missed the targeted. So you're minus two for that. Well, right. So you're net minus one. So we're on the X. Installation uh, is destroyed. Yeah. So X is. You need to this a step. So I'm going to flip him. But because, because the HQ incurred a strike result, he also loses a support capability for the for the turn. So uh-huh. normally an HQ can do two things, can support two combats or do two strikes or do whatever in a turn. Well, he can now only do one, and that's presuming you don't hit him with your second missile. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So because if you, la- if you hit him with second like this, he will be killed. Oh, yeah, but... be dead. It won't matter. Right. All right, ready? <laughs> yep. Boop. No. Well, <laughs> no. but, but uh, it's minus two. Uh, well, plus one for the theater. Ah, plus one. So it's minus one. So yeah. mm, still bring, bring still here. Me. I mean, you put a hurt on him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's. Um... You want me to just finish out, or are you going to do some? No, yeah, you resolve all yours, so you can yeah. do, do the, whichever uh, one you want to do next. The next one would be the uh, cruise missile on the airfield. So okay. also cruise. <laughs> so cruise. Oh, yeah. uh, Technically, uh, again, uh, you would find the terrain, but uh, again, it's not going to matter. Marsh, because marsh flat at that point, right? It's I, I, I right. think it will usually off board installations were considered rough that I yeah. right yeah but like yeah but if you notice those top three rows are Doesn't yeah matter. they are the same okay. right so, so i still got any let's see uh, you want to give me the quick drm or we can go through yeah well in this case there's not gonna be any because it's not targeted there's nothing there um yeah okay it's not in a city oh actually that only counts for a unit anyway um so yeah it's just yeah, kind of, yeah. I, I don't think uh, plus have one any. for non-us cruise missile Oh, okay. All right, All right. so it. ultimately plus one. Yep. Oh, well, yuck. There you go. Right. Oh, well. Such is life. Uh, yep. And then I'm uh, targeting the detection. So now you're targeting the air defense track. Yeah. yeah. Over yonder. Yep. Where did that go? <laughs> yeah, just there it roll is. There it is. Um, Happens. All right. Um, <laughs> so if you okay, go down the left hand side, you'll find air defense track. All right, there we go. And then uh, go right until you find cruise missile. Cruise, boom, 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 boom. So not a great amount, just like you said. Not, yep. not, not uh, and you'll get points. minus one. But of course, I'm going to roll very well. Oh, nope. Yeah, you get a no. <laughs> plus one for non US, and I don't think there's anything else. Yeah. So that's no, well, I don't think off so. the charts. But uh, it, it didn't even. Went I didn't even the... register on this. On the, on the <laughs> are you, are you sure you launched the cruise missile? Because we didn't see it. It didn't even leave the rail. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> With this roll. Tomahawk fire? No. Right. <laughs> right. Um, that was Russian calibre. Yeah, right. So it's absolutely, there are some videos right. probably on YouTube <laughs> of right. them. Going straight uh, to the ocean. It reminds me of the days in the Boy Scouts trying to trying to get the damn rocket to fire, right? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> yep. fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. All right, yeah. so then basically, same thing, right? So I have ballistic missiles here. You are in flat terrain. There's going to be the only modifier is going to be the minus two. Um, oh, I I lied. You have a Russian HQ, so plus one for a theater weapon defense HQ. So I will be a net. Minus one, like you were. Uh, so we will just roll. Just twice. being within, just being within a certain range. Yes, well, uh, two hexes is the air, air defense range. So a two yes. is a two, and so here's here's an interesting nuance because you apply the effects in order, right? So the first one was a strike two, right? So the three net minus one is a two is a strike two, right? Which, oh, never mind. I forgot these are only one step units, but we'll walk through it anyway. So he loses, he loses a support mission, right? And then I roll a zero, which is an X result, uh, which would normally reduce him, but he doesn't reduce, he's, he's blank. So he's just gonna be dead. 
had this been an HQ, it would have reduced and this strike marker would have come off. Um, but he would have lost both. Um, uh, support mission capabilities, right? In this case, he just he's a one step unit, so he's just dead. We can get rid of all these things. And just took this over here, whatever. OK. Uh, and I had two cruise missiles on your detection track, which mm -hmm. I need, what, three or less? Pretty much. So I hit one. Yeah. So, mm. There we go. All right. That's it. Missiles are done. Okay. Back to the. Yep. Secret play. The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so now non allied allocates yep. strikes with aircraft and helicopters, right? So here's where you get to do allocate your hair. hair airstrikes, helicopter strikes, and any escorts for your airstrikes. Um, you only have one plane left for escort duties so and or intercept, so you need to keep that in mind. When you form an air mission, you can send up the four planes in one mission, two of which can be strike planes and two of which can be escorts and or defense suppression aircraft. You don't have defense suppression aircraft, but it's okay. Uh -huh. um, your helicopters, um, well, let me, let me rewind. You can only strike a target with a particular type of mission once. So in other words, one air mission, one helicopter strike uh, against a particular target. A hex can be the target of any number of strikes, but a unit in the hex can only be hit by one of each type. Um, and again, guys you will send on strikes will not perform combat support. Correct. Yeah. So strikes, you're going to use the number on the right, and you're going to follow that same procedure we did for the ballistic missiles. Combat support, you use the number in the middle, and you fly it during the combat phase. Okay. That number, if it makes it through air defenses, becomes a die roll modifier, either obviously in your favor or against you if it's not your plane. But, for uh, helicopters, yeah. the left one is the modifier of the strike, and the right one is the range. Correct. And, and from the experience, the helicopters that have one firepower or, or whatever we call it uh, are, are not very useful at strikes they should they should be relegated to combat support helicopters right, with two so pretty I, good. So for, so, that's funny because i have a friend of mine he he never uses his helicopters for combat support he always uses them to strikes no matter what I maybe because as as I, as I said, I, I have only ex, uh, experience from Taiwan. Mm. Uh, we we had pretty much better experience with the helicopters that were uh, the the value of one. Right. Uh, I I after some time I just left them. <laughs> combat support the the apaches though oh we will sending them on strikes every time oh yeah very <laughs> dangerous uh -huh. so is there a is there a method for marking it for cs yeah there should be a marker for it pre yeah. similar to the cruise missiles all right so i have all okay so let's just talk through it for me okay um these guys are all in a ready status this this hind is in a ready status as well um, and you have and you have some hokum or ca camo. Where are those? So you ha you have cam. Oh, sorry, you have me twenty eight. Oh, never mind. Yes, you're middle. right. You got hokums out here too. Oh, and another hind on the left. Yeah, you got. He's hiding there. Okay, all right. So you this guy, play... this guy, I'll probably keep for combat support. Now, so I would mark this. So you don't need to mark it for combat support. Okay. No, because that comes that comes this. later. You, yeah, you're, now, you're this, not using him for a strike. So this, um, this off map hind, if you will, or the one that's yeah. at an airfield or farp. Do I do I need to do anything with it? If I'm gonna go ahead and just say close, you know, close air, close support for this too. No, no, no not not no. until you actually use it. All right, so yeah. that's what I'm kind of doing. All right. The only, um, only thing you need to declare who is going to perform strikes and you okay. mark uh, just for for observation for for. Uh, rules observing mostly we're gonna maybe do a combat strike uh, strike here and a strike here um you definitely want to use su 22 because it excels 22. hold on 
it was the one on the right. Sorry, SU24, you want to use as a strike yeah, because he Frogger? extends. Is that right? <laughs> no, no, this is, this is the flanker. Russian flanker. F111. That's no, that's not the flanker, is it? How, no. no how yeah, the MiG-29 is the flanker. SU24 is the... Foxbat? No, no, that's it. It won't be on F, F. I F think F every it. every aircraft that starts with F is a fighter. Fencer. Oh, sorry, it is Fencer. F. That's it. I, yeah, I, I'm not stupid. Yeah, it's Fencer. It's the F111 wannabe. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, uh, that would be a better strike because it has. If you look, the strike value is the value on the right. And it not only has better strike value, it also has standoff capability. So it avoids anti-aircraft fire. I see. All right. Now, so then keep everybody else as support. Combat right? support. You can. You might. Right. For now. For now. Yeah. Whatever. So it's just so we get an example of a strike. Correct. And... Yeah. Uh, the and... question is, do, do you send a SU-27 as an escort to it? I would think that you have yes. in the air, air strike, and you uh, have sorry, the, air security box. so I would just mark that by doing that, yeah, pretty much. Right. I think because after that, they go home, all right, either, either way. Uh, I mean, that's right. its, that's its function at this point. So, so you, so you have one airstrike right now, right? Eh, yeah, yeah, no. exactly. Okay, you, you, uh, you, and yeah. were you gonna do a helicopter strike? There, um, there is a marker for it somewhere, but yeah, just, looking, just point, just point your target, and we yeah, will remember. As you say, I don't think this, I don't think this module has the helicopter markers. In it. Can we just put it like that? If I'm going to strike you, you here, can. you just have to remember where it came from, right? Which in this scenario uh, is easy. Yeah, right? it's pretty easy. Yeah. Right. Um, the only thing you have to do is right click on it and mark it as having used one mission because it can only do two things per turn. So, so like yeah. that. No, 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 no. No, there's a there's an marker status. Uh, I, I believe it will be support mission. it won't be in status. Yeah, support mission. Support mission, yeah, because you only can perform two of okay. those. Yeah, in no the physical game, you would you would rotate it ninety and then one eighty for the second, or okay. another yep. method of keeping track. I like to use little little colored discs, but all right, yep. Um, okay. okay. That's all at least plotted out for now. Great. So then I do the same thing. I allocate all my strikes. All right. Um, I have a special, obviously, dedicated wild weasel aircraft that I will put against your weasel detection. I will save my SU-22s for combat support. I will use both helicopters as strikes, I think. So the Apache down here and the Polish hind here. Um, so I'm going to mark them with uh, what would be something good. I think I'll use these just so we know that they're not actual strike markers. Um, so the one, what do I want to hit with the one? That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> I want to do something, though. I think I'll send my Apaches against this mech and the hind against this mech just to see if we can slow you down a little bit there. Um, so that's airstrikes. For me, that's so done. All right. Now you attempt. You try to attempt my. Sorry. You attempt to detect my wild weasel strike. Because that goes in first, and then I I will resolve that strike, and then we'll continue. So I have the chance to reduce your detection. detection. Before, detection. Yeah, be, before the rest of the turn, because I believe if you perform regular not seed strikes right. against detection, it only. Yeah. Takes effect after exactly. all the strikes. Advanced detection table. Sorry. Correct. And so your detection value is a six, right? That's where it sits now. I'm sorry. Where did you grab that from? Uh, that's where your detection marker is on the track. Ah, very good. If you look there at the detection, the one right. reduced. Yep. yep. And then yep. I think the only modifier that's going to apply here will be attack helicopter. Uh, 
No, you're against the wild weasel. So it'll be the plus one for the wild yeah. weasel. Yeah, um, uh, AWAX yeah. advantage is not high enough to matter. Uh, so that's going to be it. So it's going to be plus one versus a weasel. So this definitely uh, will tell you or uh, inform you that bringing that down as much as possible is a good thing. All right. Correct. So right, one, so one thing while we should talk about while we're looking at that, a D, so a, a dash obviously is nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So those a nine. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> um, yeah. A D oh. is a detection. So a, a unit that's detected is is subject to SAM and potentially AAA fire, depending on uh, other conditions. And ED is early detection, which means you can intercept the planes mm -hmm. and also do SAM fire and AAA. Interesting. Uh, I like that differentiation. Yeah. Unfortunately, with a nine, I think you. Yep. Oh, well. Uh, so I will immediately resolve. So. If we go to the strike table, um, this is again against the air defense track, but you notice wild weasels have their own column. Well, they share it with a five six, but um, because this is their dedicated air defense or CAD, right? So they're they're mm -hmm. really good at that. Um, uh, this plane also happens to have a minus two pilot, mm -hmm. so four right becomes there. a two, Oosh. which only drops it by one. Uh, and then uh, you, one of the nuances is even though you didn't detect him, he doesn't get to do standoff. So you will always roll AAA after the fact. Uh -huh. um, it, it only matters if your AAA is a two or better because what you're really looking for is an abort result. Um, but now that I say that, I think. So I do that under Air defense. Oh, fire. The wild don't affect AAA. That's right. So yeah, you're you're really just looking for an abort result to see if the AAA gets him on the way out because he wasn't detected on the way in, and okay. he did not conduct a standoff attack. Um, but I'm using. Am, am I at the right table here? Oh yeah. Sorry. You're so if you look at your AAA value on the defense track, it's a two. Okay. So you're looking at AAA two. Okay. Right, and there yep. are no modifiers on this particular roll. Um, but what you're really looking for is that A result. <laughs> nope. nope. So he just flies home. Um, by special rule, I get a second free wild weasel attack. So I will use that on the detection as well. Uh, but it's just a straight roll. And a nine will be fine. And that's just simulating, again, there are other assets in, in theater. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't have to use this against the track. I could use it as defense suppression for a strike mission. Right. Or... Yep. Um, or combat sport, but I did not choose to do so. So, uh, okay. Pretty good. Now you attempt to detect all of my other strikes now that I have reduced your detection. Um, helos are always, you always use the local detection. Um, Which would be on the unit column. targeted. Uh, yeah. These guys right here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. So you're going to use the local detection column on the advanced detection. You don't use the detection track for. for oh, I see. All right. Yes. All right. For the helicopters, it's always it. local. The yeah. only modifier that might apply is if they are in vicinity of some HQ. Uh, yeah, you're going to get minus one for the HQ. I think you get a minus one because they're attack helicopters. Uh huh. So you're going to be net minus two. It's pretty dangerous for attack helicopters. So. Uh -huh. yeah. So pick pick one because we're going to resolve it uh, entirely. Leftmost here. I'll do this one. Okay. There's my roll, which is horrible yet again. Yeah. So even with a minus two, he is not going to be detected. All right. Um, so he cannot be inter. Okay, intercepted there. Yeah, well, you right, could intercept though. a helo anyway, but he's not going to take local SAMs or local AAA either. Yeah. Um, you, so technically, you roll all the. I, I misspoke. You roll all the detections first. All right, so I did that, and I'm doing this detection now. Yep. Yeah, although that, does it? Ah, okay. It, it it only pretty much affects the game if you have intercepting aircraft, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, it wouldn't matter because there are no interceptors. So I did you could, you could do it one at a time, and it wouldn't really matter. But sure. and also, there you was... can intercept helicopters anyway, so you could roll and resolve. Yeah, right? that's true. <laughs> yeah. Was so this one because you, because you detected it, we might as well resolve that one. Sure. Now, oh, well, actually, I only had two things. I forgot. I don't have any other airstrikes. So, so local a, a AAA? Uh, local SAMs. So, SAMs before AAA. Yep. Okay. Any modifier? Um, 
for helicopters, there'll probably be some. Neg one. Yeah, uh, only since over we enemy units. units. Eating over enemy units. You did get the minus um, one for an HQ, though. Okay, so we're at neg one. I roll a zero. Oof. Boom. So I think that's an X result, right? Mm hmm. Loses one step. Yep. And may continue mission. Correct. So technically, the two becomes a one. Let me go put my uh, Apaches here. So he's still coming in, but he's now he's a helo one instead of a helo two. But now he has to survive the anti-aircraft fire. All right, so here we go. Which is a minus um, one of his attack health. And a big one yeah. net or whatever. All right, so, so boom, little... not great. So that's nothing. Mm -hmm. So to resolve, we go back to the strike chart. And again, so the it, you know, it's always to find the terrain, find what's doing the, the striking, and then find the die roll modifiers, right? So in this One case, you are in, I think, flat, or flat it. woods. Hilo. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you're in rough. Um, rough helo one. So we're rough, right here, right? Yep, rough helo one. So it's the third column in. Right here. Yep. And then. Because you're um, a unit in a hex that has a city, you get a plus one. So in other words, you can take cover within the city, right? All right. So, Presumably. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be it. Okay. So there are no, no results from Sam other than flipping him. Um, right. So so if you had gotten, so say your AAA had been a plus one or a plus two result, I right. would take that die roll modifier and apply it to my strike. Yeah. So in this case, it's just a plus one for the city. So it's a helo one. Mm -hmm. That's probably so, going to be nothing. Yeah. Right. We end up so here. We can right? get yeah. rid of this. So this one is just coming in untouched. So it's a helo one with a plus one. All right. Also, also nothing. No, we're both we're both not scoring anything here. All right. So nope. nope. So now we do the same thing, except I'm trying to detect your stuff. All right. So mm -hmm. you want to do? You have one helo yeah. and one real, right? So let's do the helo. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to do the same thing. I get local detection. Um, I do have an HQ within okay. uh, two hexes. Uh, okay. And net you minus. are an attack helicopter, so it's going to be a net minus two. There you go. And I don't minus two. So we got right. nothing there. Okay. So next. You can either resolve that or we can roll for the detection. Uh, go ahead and resolve it. So you resolve because I didn't detect you, so you're just a Hilo two. Okay, so Hilo two, what mods? Yep. And I'm gonna get you a know. plus one for having a city, and that's gonna be it. All right, so rolling and plusing one. Yuck. Boy, we're both we're both yeah, we're now. sucking wind here. All right, that's fine. Yep. Um, and then he just he just goes home. All right, and he came from Marion here. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So now and here. Next. So here's where I'm using my normal detection. And so we should probably pause. There are a lot of rules around when you use normal versus when you use local. Okay. For I the feel most part in Poland, you're going to be using normal detection against aircraft. But there could be a few cases where you don't. Okay. So by um, scenario, normal, you're normal, normal. normal means you're using the, uh, the track. The track, right. So my yeah. detection value is five. Okay. Um, you are not within two of an HQ. Right. So no mods on that. Get a minus one for that. And I think that's probably that's gonna be it. it. If yeah. If if you are like I mentioned if you are I don't know how it is in this scenario because regularly if you are not in the vicinity of enemy HQ or above the like home country, you use local detection, right? You only Correct. use normal yeah. if Poland has some special rules because of the S four hundreds and yeah, I bet um, some other things. But yeah, yeah, you're right. If you, it, usually it's within a radius of an HQ that provides mm -hmm. that, that yeah. normal or area. over home territory or, 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 country, or no. then you always are under the normal detection. Obviously, right, exactly. <laughs> and there's a there's actually a chart on the back of one of the I don't remember if it's a player aid card or a rule book, but it has an air defense chart that the, hey i'm doing this and i'm here what do i do local or normal so you can usually follow that yeah that is yeah air defense resolution chart i think it's called um all right so uh, uh no minus so i think i'm just on the five and that's probably a detection because i think it's pegged to that yep 
So no intercepts and it's just a regular detection, which means your escort just goes to the flown box because not subject to SAM fire. All right. Except by optional rule. So now we're just strike yeah. for that. Yep. So I'm just going to drag him over here. So now this guy is coming in. Um, he is detected. Technically, there's a marker. Um, so you would normally go through and because you would roll for them all. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's in the supplements. So there's an early detection to detection marker. Anyway, um, so when you resolve a strike, you resolve each individual unit. So say you had say you had sent both of these guys in. Uh -huh. We would fully resolve this one. And by fully resolve, I mean, I do my SAM. I do my AAA, except there is no AAA because he has standoff. And then you resolve your strike. And then whatever happens to him happens to him. And then I resolve SAM, AAA, and you resolve your strike, right? Uh, but you only have one plane, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so he was detected. I'm going to use my SAM value of six. Uh, there's not going to be anything here because there's no HQ. That's a... If you're on SAM six column oops here. On, oops on my part. No, no air defense coverage there. Or no mm -hmm. extra air defense coverage, I should say. So five on six is a plus one. So you're going to so, be a plus one on your strike. Okay. Perfect. Now, normally I would roll triple A. Right. But because I'm a mechanized unit or, or mo uh, motorized or mechanized unit, you can use standoff against me because you have the asterisk, which means my triple A doesn't get to shoot. Right. right. If, that, so if I was a lay are... unit, you could still use standoff, but you take a plus three. Although you can also press the attack, but then the AAA gets to fire. So there's a little bit of a nuance there. There's not a whole lot of leg units. Well, except the allies have some light infantry. But So at this point, now you're, again, the strike chart. Yeah. Right? Now what's the territory here? We got... Um, Green is flat, flat with... With the city. Mm -hmm. so, so you're looking at flat, and then you're going to cross-reference that with your strike value, which is a four. Okay, that's what I was. That's what I was going to ask you. Yep. Okay, so I'm Define here in the column, and that's why Tom was saying you want to strike with that guy because if you look at that column, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's good, and um, and he had the standoff, which is good. Right. Too. So you're gonna be you're gonna be a plus one from the same result, right? You're mm -hmm. dodging the missiles, so it's yeah, going up a little bit, and yeah. you're gonna be a plus one because I have a city in the hex. All right, so plus two to this roll, right. hopefully, be a very low roll. Boop. There you go. Yeah, it baby. doesn't get any lower, so. <laughs> Because... All right, so um, so two is the result, right? Yep. Uh, the installation or unit takes strike two marker air defense yep. track negative. So we put uh, a so... strike two on him. Yep. And then that guy just goes back to flum. And so this is probably a good time to point out. Actually, we didn't talk about ground units, right? right. Um, here, let me drag this out of the way. Yep. I was about so to that, in the anatomy of a dra of a ground unit, right? Um, obviously, you have the name of the unit and any formation it might belong to. Uh, its type, so it's this happens to be mechanized. This happens to be mechanized infantry, right? Uh -huh. The number in the circle is its stacking points. So this is a two. Um, uh -huh. Stacking is limited to four in a hex, three in a mountain. There, there are no mountains in Poland, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, four, four stacking points in a hex. You can overstack. Um, but it gets really bad really fast if you do. So in other words, not only four stacking points can defend and the ER of every unit in there is reduced by one for every stacking point you're over. So you don't necessarily want to do that. Uh, but there's no penalty. There's no like elimination if you're overstacked, except by enemy action because that's a juicy target. Um, the number to the right is the efficiency rating. So that's a n rolled up number of doctrine training um, uh -huh. high-tech equipment, you know, that kind of stuff kind of rolled into, into one number. And that you compare that to attacking or defending uh, to, for column shifts. Uh, and then across the bottom is the standard attack, defense, movement, right? Uh -huh. um, the red oval means it's mechanized. Uh, orange, is there an orange guy around here somewhere? Uh, here, see. he's motorized, right? Okay. Uh, this guy is... Uh, light infantry because he's he's yellow with a black outline. Okay. I don't think there. So regular infantry would just be the does four. This, what does that I, give you? What are some of the advantages of that? Well, this so the the black outline means he is air mobile capable. Yeah. Okay. 
A regular regular leg infantry is not air mobile capable. Okay. Yeah. And lights have other benefits when they are in tough terrain, right? Correct. Yeah. So defending or modifiers to combat and right stuff like um, that. Although, and um, they can also infiltrate enemy correct. zone of control. Correct. In certain cases. It's so not, do we want to cost them because it's pretty dang flat? But so do we want to? I mean, obviously, you just talked about. Yeah. Oh, so, so the reason the reason I the reason I wanted to point that out was so this strike two reduces right. every value on the counter except stacking by two mm. to a minimum of wow. one. Okay, so everybody just, it reduces it and then min right. one. Okay. So this guy is so now a, a one two four er three. So he's a very nice. Good. That's different. I like that. I like that. That that gives you a little bit more flexibility than just a rotating right. or, or flipping. Yep. So nice. Interesting. Right. Is there also a flip state on these at all? as well yeah so yeah he yeah he could reduce right so if you had gotten to a an x result he would have reduced right okay and yeah, then all you would still have... so yeah and oh, you okay. still so have and you have, still have strike on you yes mm, that's yeah. that's that's mighty okay yeah it hurts yeah but but yeah and and you recover one strike level per, per turn at the end yeah, of the turn this so strike it's is... like a it's a, it's a it's a combined morale and yeah, it's a continuing um, effect. Right? Um, I mean, um, but the problem is kind of compressed. Yeah, the results of one action in the game in yeah, in what's not into only two or three different mechanics. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Really, it, that wasn't one strike. That's a series of strikes uh, over yeah. several days, right? So right, and then it's com combining morale and right, yeah, movement and right. capabilities and blah blah blah. Um, repair and so need to repair this. Right. So that was airstrikes. I think we're done. I don't think there's any more air or helo strikes, right? Um, so we can conduct naval bombardment, that, but that will be difficult. <laughs> um, so normally we would roll for collateral damage, but neither one of us struck an airbase. Um, at this point, you would roll to see what the effect on that airbase was. So if there was a strike two or a strike one or it was destroyed, uh -huh. there's a chart that you would roll against to see, well, how many... Did it damage any air units? If so, who chooses that damage, that air unit to get damaged? And if there are any helos there, you would roll for that as well. But we didn't do that. So, um, so now for, just um, considering our time frame here, um, yeah. do you want to just kind of roll through the phases here, just at a steady pace, and just explain yeah, I think, what I the think we could, would be? I think we could probably finish up because what we got like twelve minutes. I think we could. Yeah. We could finish off the strike phase. It's not going to be that bad or that that, yeah. that hard. We don't have any. So the next thing is HQs, um, non-allied. Yeah. So your HQ can do two actions per turn, two support missions per turn. You can either use it for a strike, an HQ strike, mm -hmm. or you can use it for combat support in the combat support phase. The only caveat is you can only do it once in each segment. So in other words, you can use an HQ to strike once in this phase and then use it again in the second strike phase as a strike, or you could use, you could strike in this phase and use it once in a, a combat phase. Now, mind you, there are three combat phases in an initiative turn um, as a combat support, or you could use, use it to do two combat supports, but in two different combat segments. So I know, I know that was kind of confusing, but basically the, the rule of thumb is you can do two things, but you can only do one thing per segment in a segment. All right. Well, so, I think I'd probably just just for demonstration's sake, probably uh, do a strike and yeah. and do a support in that later yep. segment. Yeah. So, for instance, I mean, this guy's already mm -hmm. hit, right. It might be worth your time to, using one of these HQs to try to hit him and knock him yep. down a notch, right? Yep. Yep. That's what I was going to do. And yep. uh, and you've got a couple over here now. The the way the HQ stuff works is you you do one i do one you do one i do one now i only have okay. two of those, so. so then so then looking at these though what which is there anything just just bl bl uh, glaringly obvious as far as which one would be a better to strike this uh in theory it makes no difference because you haven't used any hqs right um you do have two over here who, who then would be supporting so each other in some Right. So this guy is a higher level HQ. You can tell because he's got the two mm. little blue dots on him. Mm -hmm. um, also, he's got more X's. So yep, he can sure. support any of the blue units. This right. guy can only support the dark blue or whatever color that is, right? He can only support first guards tank units, right? Which is right. which happens to be these three. Right. Right. This guy 
can support these as well as the other blue division, which I think is over here. But they're so far away that he's probably not going to be able to, to help with those guys until the, until you until you converge down in the middle of the map a little bit, right? All right. So um, we probably want to leave this for close for the support and then use this guy to strike here. Right. Well, that's that's what I'm getting at because you have more HQs on this side. Right. Um, you could use one of them and still have plenty left for combat support against, say, this guy or whatever. Yeah, okay. or even use right. one against this guy and one against this guy. Um, the range of your support is that superscript number. So if you look at an HQ, it's a zero, and all HQs, yeah, one except five. Two, then. All HQs are zero. That mm. five is its range for mm. strikes. It is also its combat support value. So if you use it in combat, it's worth five mm. combat strength. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. All right. I like how you do that. It's an amalgam of uh, all, all you know. Brigade and division level, right? Support well, the, the Russians, well, I I destroyed your one artillery. You get more later, but you know they right. they tend to have more actual artillery units. NATOs are more rolled into the brigade because that's yeah. how doctrinal. Yeah. Use, right? yeah. Okay. Um, so, so you're saying to, I, so to, to to do a strike, you would just right click on the HQ. Yeah. Go to that uh, status and mark it as a support mission because you can only do one. Right. Yep. Two, well, two per turn, but you're using one, and then you point to the target, and obviously either one of those is within five, so it doesn't really matter. All right. Yeah. So we're within range. Yep. And then you're just uh, going to go to the strike table again. You're going to cross reference right. terrain with what's doing, right? In this right, case, it's again. an other HQ. All right. So other HQ, but we're on what is that there? Flat. It's flat. All right. So yep. flat. Other HQ. So we're on the three here. Yep. And then you're going to be plus one because I'm in a city. That's it. Okay. Hold on. Boom. Three plus two, five, get a one. Plus one, right? Yep. So in this case, he's going to reduce. Mm, so he's reduced and has the strike two on it. Oosh. Well, in this case, you, you reached three, so it's going to go away. Yeah. Because if, yeah. if you reach third one, it's flipped and the strike is, you know, removed, but then you can accumulate more strikes on it. On this if turn. you accumulate three again, you remove it. Correct. Awesome. And now you cannot hit him again because, again, it's one per type per segment. You, If you had artillery, you could hit him in the next. So after HQ strikes is artillery strikes, you could hit him with artillery if you wanted. But there's no artillery left up here. But anyway. Um, so then it goes to me to do strikes. I don't think I'm going to waste my HQs doing that, so I'll let you go back to doing strikes. All right. Um, so technically I could strike from here. Uh, so this guy is done, but you could use, yeah, you could use this guy, this guy, uh, this guy. You have your Belarusian. Yeah. Um, yeah the Belarusians do have artillery left somewhere in there. Yeah, they're not within range, right? Uh, not up there, no. They, they're yeah, their targets are obviously down this way. But. Yeah. All right. Um, interesting. All so right. It's a, it's what? a, you know. Yeah. Decision point of because this guy is still untouched. Do you yep. use up a strike trying to knock him down a little bit? Maybe. Right. I mean, you do have two HQs up there. Right. Um, but like I said before, there's three combat phases technically. Yeah. Right. So we got, so in other words, we still have the combat. Yeah. So we, I'll, I'll probably, there are ahead. things that mitigate against that. Right. So yeah, I'll go for it. Striking okay. here. So you're going to use the first guards tank HQ. Yep. And so I got to mark that, uh, yeah. uh, support mission. All right. Yep. So this is a, uh, superior or no he's still he's still another hq supreme hq is a special type of hq ah, okay there's right, only one and that's in korea so yeah <laughs> all right so the flat they did it off so we're here and and we're still at a plus plus one for the city yeah all right I'll roll a six which is not wonderful no nope. probably nope the plus one drove you right up just out yep Okay, so that was lovely. Um, so then you got another. Yeah, I'm. Goal. I'm. I'm not going to do any. I'm. I'm saving. Right. Mine, so you can do whatever you want to do. And how many do I have left? 
You Total. have this HQ, this HQ, and you have two Belarusian HQs. All right. Well, these. All right. Let, let's finish up here then. Um, this HQ can will sh strike this one. Oh, that's not what I'm doing. Here we go. So we're on a... Oh, oh, you, you can't hit this guy again. Sorry. Oh. He's already... Oh, that's right. Down. That's now, right. You do have one, two, three, four. Oh, nope. You're just shy of getting down there. So that guy, you could just leave. All right. Let's just... Um, and I think if you keep hitting... There's either clear or if you keep hitting it, it should go away. I think if you hit it again... Yep. Maybe not. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Sorry. Um, <laughs> All right. So down here we will hit nope, this yeah, guy. Yeah, he's out of range too. So yeah, really, yeah. you're you're down to these. Two All right. So let's do this one first. And notice their range is a little bit shorter. Yeah. But they can. So like this guy can reach this hex. I think they can both reach this hex, and I don't think either can reach this hex. All right. Um, I think this one's probably a more immediate threat because it's pair mobile, right? Um, let's go for that from here. All right. So I'm marking that as being used. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, though, this is different terrain, right? So that's rough. Uh, it's flatwood. It's rough. It's basically. The... Oh no! I think that will move it up one. Yeah. Yeah. So we're right here, and it's. Other HQ. Yep. All right, yep. so we're on this we're on this column here. Yep. And still plus, plus one. For city. one. Yep. This is the 173rd or the first of the 82nd. Uh, 173. Okay. Um, I roll a two. That'll do something. So a three so for one. strike one. Yep. So they take a strike one. All right. Boom. And these guys are out of range. They can only hit this guy, right? Yep. In the rough woods. Okay. So we will do that. Rough woods, other HQ, plus one. Uh, he is not in a city, so there's no plus one. Okay. Roll an eight, which doesn't matter. All right. Oop. That's that. Yep. And since I didn't do any <laughs> HQs, we just roll to the next step, which is artillery. So you're going to do the same thing with all of your artillery units. Um, the only two you have left are, there should be a rocket artillery, I think, under each one of these HQs down here. You are correct. So the Russians eventually get some more uh, as reinforcements. but. All right, so we'll take this guy. We have to mark him in a certain... Same same thing, same way as the HQ. Yeah. yeah. All right, so boom. All right. And so the difference and... for, sorry, just so while you're there, the difference for artillery units in combat, so you can use them as a strike, absolutely. You just find the right column, right? In combat, they don't provide combat strength. They just shift columns to the right or left if you're defending. But... All right, I think at this point I'd probably strike. All yeah. Right. <clears throat> just because I'm not, I, I don't know, whatever. That's fine. Not right. too so far. You're hitting, uh, you're so, yeah, right here. Yep. Right. yep. So his strike value, though, was... Uh, there should be, it should be the same. It's other HQ slash Artie. I think the old chart doesn't show that yet, though. Oh, you're right. It does. It's yeah. there. Okay. But it's other so HQ, then... the new ones will say other HQ slash Artie. And no mod, right? Nope. Boom, five. I think that's a strike one. It is one strike, yep. yep. So you're prepping, you're prepping the battlefield here. Yeah. And we will do similarly. Yeah. And now this is a case where different type of unit, you can actually hit the 173rd again because it's not an HQ strike now, it's an artillery strike. Dude, or you could hit the eight, that's eight, not, four, right? That's not the range. Is that the range, five? Uh, just, four. Yeah, so no, right? Oh, sorry. You should have used you should have used the blue guy against him and then the green guy up here. Oh, well, okay. All right, oh, that's fine. Yeah, that. that's fine. Well, we can just say that that was a miss then, right? So then we're going to go. All right. Um... All right, rolling it on the same chart, right? Same. Yeah. Except the, this will be a plus one for the city. Yeah. 
Oh, so two that's a hit. plus one. That is a hit. Um, so I was that the 73rd or the 82nd? One um, seven, 173. Okay. So now he goes to strike two. Yeah. Right. So he's yep. seriously degraded. Yep. Okay. And that will be it. Um, we could do aerial mining missions, but again, there's no naval, so we can skip that part. Okay, hold on. Let's they go back and look. This. Let's, so let's, technically, let's, let's we would be in the first supply phase. You skip that right. on turn one. And so the very next thing is movement and combat. So we could absolutely just fold here. Yeah, we can probably just fold it there. But okay, so, so generally speaking, works very similar to everything else right what are what are some of the charts let's go at least look at some of the charts involved um sure uh yeah so where would we be so our standard think, chart? yeah so the tec obviously right um yeah because next is movement and combat so it's very right. well <laughs> i was just about to say it's relatively straightforward but there is some nuance right so you have to know your movement type Right. So like we were talking about before, you're either leg, light infantry, motorized, okay. or mechanized, right? And uh, right, which is color coded, which is nice. Thing. Correct. Right. Um, and then there's either clear or storm. Yeah, all right. Easy it's really, enough. it's storm or other because overcast has no effect on on movement. Um, obviously, it's harder right. to move in storm, and will it will make some train that's not prohibited prohibited depending on your movement type, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the more interesting parts about the TEC to note. Let me pull up my uh, some of the prohibited combinations. Here. So in the combat effects. You know, it's yeah, kind of in, right. written in shorthand, but you can see all the combat effects are listed there. Armor and mech attacking straight infantry in, in those types of terrains or times two or times one and a half or whatever. And that's all reflected in the rule. Mm -hmm. um, but it, like Tom was talking about earlier, um, light infantry has bonuses in, in certain types of terrain. So you can see like mm -hmm. in rough or rough woods, they're a plus or minus one, depending. So minus one if they're attacking, plus one if they're defending. Mm -hmm. um, some... Uh, if you look on the left, some types of terrain prohibit particular types of movement, like uh, air mobile or pair drop. Um, so in, our, in in other words, like in Highlands, which you're not going to find on the Poland map, but you can do air mobile, but only if there's a road in that hex. You can't pair drop on a Highlands hex at all. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you'll note that some of the terrain is marked as no ZOC. So there's no ZOC projected into the hex. Uh -huh. But there is a ZOC projected out of the hex, unless it's obviously into another mountain or whatever. Um, and one thing we didn't mention is you have to have at least two stacking points of combat unit. So, yep. in other words, a non-zero attack value to project a ZOC. Okay, that's good. So, uh, that's like good. a battalion that only has a one strength or a, um, right. sorry, a two a one stacking point is not going right. to project a ZOC. Right. Um, nice. yeah. Three different types of roads. There are no secondary roads in Poland. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, but primary roads and highways, obviously, you get better stuff. Jungle is for Vietnam. Um, like a lot of these things may or may not matter. Um, uh -huh. Important to note that ZLCs do not extend over river uh, uh -huh. unless yeah. the river is frozen, which in this case, they are frozen for this scenario. Um, tunnel is on the Taiwan map uh, and then town airfield. So if you look on the left hand side of the TEC, you'll notice that it's divided into two things, hex terrain and in hex terrain. So some things are the hex itself. Other things are in the hex and then modify the hex terrain from there. So that's pretty much right here. pretty yeah. much that, right? Um, yeah. You know, uh, the one thing that you can't look at because it's not in the module is the CRT. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Uh, but but CRT is pretty classic. <laughs> Straight yeah. It's, one it, of, uh, yeah, it's a kind of combination it, of uh, comparison of strength. It's, and, correct. Yeah, it's odds. Yeah. Um, Adds and terrain, and then you have effects which are pretty much step losses plus right. Retreat. Yeah. Pro probably one of the couple of the different nuances are um, if there's a remainder, you, you automatically get a minus one, assuming you outnumber the enemy, right? So in other words, yeah. if it's straight to if it's ten to five, that's two to one. There's no remainder, right? Uh -huh. If it's eleven to five, it's two to one with a remainder. You're gonna as the attacker, you're gonna get a minus one. So trying to get out of the perfect odds counting, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. There are columns on the chart. If you get high enough odds, if the defender can't s satisfy all of his losses, you don't take as many losses. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that's pretty yes. probably the two biggest nuances there. Uh, there's just a lot of dial modifiers. Yeah, the, the thing that is kind of different from other games is how far you retreat. Right. Depends on the terrain from which oh, you yeah. are driven off. Yeah. 
uh, flat and rough terrain, you're going to retreat two hexes. Although there are caveat if you stop in a city or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, and then you can do a mechanized follow up if you have appropriate. Yeah, the, the, the retreat distance is always the same, and it depends on the terrain from which you Correct. were driven off. Basically, mm -hmm. it's, it right. will be one or two hexes. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really much else on the CRT to talk about. Um, oh, I will say it is nonlinear. So, you know, it's, in other words, it doesn't, and, it doesn't yeah, but we, continuously climb or reduce in losses or retreats, right? So, the, so it, I am but, noticing there is a second strike phase and a second yes. supply phase. In an initiative turn, there's there are two two supply phases. All you skip it on the first turn of the, the supply phase and two strike phases. There are three combat, up to three, potentially three combat phases um, for the attacker, because you'll get an exploit movement and exploit combat. Um, but you'll be automatically two shifts left in the exploit phase, um, and that's just you know because you're pressing, right? Um, right. Otherwise, both sides get a, a movement and a combat phase, uh, and this is all in an initiative term. In a in a contested turn, there's just one for each, right? So it's mm -hmm. much it's much slower pace and much slower tempo. Um, and then there's a bunch of cleanup. So the reorganization phase, um, well, isolation and surrender, which happens rarely, but can. Um, but then the real, that's where you reset for the next turn, right? You uh -huh. cover missions, like Tom was saying before, you start recovering strikes um, from strikes. Um, yeah. uh, you can start replacing your air units that got damaged. Uh -huh. Um, no, you ch you check you check which air units stay because uh, air units that will have flown are just ready and you need that with a bolt at roll and they will be the move to flown or to ready mm -hmm. depending on the roll. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, everybody and automatically moves from flown. And, and then, then any any surviving special forces become available. Yeah, you're moving back to yeah. Repel, right. You're uh -huh. gonna get reinforcements, you're gonna get replacement points. So you get you get repels in order to rebuild units or, or bring them back mm -hmm. to the um, uh -huh. which are and hard, you, hard that, right? This is the phase where you also clear ta cities and urban hexes. In which place? It oh, sorry. Out. Yeah, uh, make a clearing roll. So, yep. you know, had we gotten there and you uh, had units here, right, um, yep. in this city, which because you're likely to take, right? Right. As soon as you enter the city, you'll go up to the clearing marker, um, which is to the left of the ship icon. And you just pull one of those off the deck and you just put it on there, right? Uh -huh. um, it, you don't look at it until this phase and then you flip it and you have to roll that number or higher in order to clear it and take control of the city. You roll yeah, and there, there is a ton of modifiers also. Yeah, there are a uh -huh. bunch of modifiers. If you roll lower, generally there is no effect as long as you have enough stacking points for the type of thing you're trying to clear, which I think uh -huh. is... I think three. So you do have to have like a certain momentum. Yeah. yeah. Now, even if you have fewer, you can roll. But if you fail, then you lose a step, right? Because you didn't have uh -huh. enough force to get in there. And then you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you clear I like it, that. Put it back, right? Um, and actually, if you take that, if you take that box that's holding the clearing markers and just expand it out a little bit. Um, so for this scenario, a bunch of the markers have been removed because. I didn't want a bunch of sixes in there because that really slows it down. <laughs> so they, there, there are nine of each, three, four, five. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility from as a scenario developer. Though. Right. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like games that allow for that right. variance. So, uh, so I got to say, overall, I'm impressed. Oh, good. Um, that is the first time I've played the game. Nice. <laughs> I've read the rules before, <laughs> but uh, it um, it flows well. Um, the phasing feels natural, good. Uh, I really enjoy the air, the air rules, the superiority <laughs> and the matching. It feels good. Um, and the detail level is, I think, just, just about right. Right. You don't want that to be too much more. Otherwise, it would right. kind of dominate it. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing sticks, you know, no thorns in the eye here. Yeah. So like I said, yeah, follow the sequence of play, and it's very procedural, right? I mean, there's not a lot of surprises in there. Right. Um, now, as far as, like, solo play, do you have any, like, guidance on that, or are there guides written on it at all? No, nah, not that I know. I mean, it, there's okay. no hidden information. Um, yeah. So it's really yeah, yeah, yeah. how 
how two minded can you be while you're playing? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just didn't know if they, anybody um, had written. But like, you know, it's like, it's not like you can't see that your opponent's telegraphed move. There's nothing hidden. <laughs> it's it's easy game to test because there's no like withholding informations or hiding anything from the other player. Right. Really, the 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 one I guess the one issue there that comes in is. If AWACS advantage is zero and both sides have to put air superiority missions up, then technically that's yes, cool, right. Yeah, even, that's... even the air superiority mission itself is well, you know what the other guy is going to do because you are the other guy. So uh, 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 that's probably the yeah, I mean, you kind of you can randomize if you if you want to. Yeah, you can and most of the time it's really really obvious what you should. Do. Yeah, yeah. In in many scenarios, you pretty much know what will go into the air and what will right. stay. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Which is you know generally correct Espe especially it's it's especially obvious for forces that have aircraft dedicated to one mission mm -hmm. with right. china china has little oh. problems because they, they have very distinctive fighters and strike aircraft they, they have very right. little multi-purpose aircraft that i remember yeah very few <laughs> yeah they have a lot of x zero zero aircraft the only thing they do is air yes. security so you might as well put them in there right <laughs> Yeah, they will always going into the air, and unless I was really driven down when I've seen that Correct. I couldn't right. take superiority, I held them just so the rest can repair right. and resupply. Yeah, well, and that's what we talk about. I mean, that whole air game is a game in itself. Yeah, it is. So. There was one question from the crowd, by the way. We did have a live question in regards to do we see next war India Pakistan at GMT store again in the near, near future. Is that set up for so, any reprint? Yes. I don't know what the timing is. I know. So I have talked with GMT about putting it back up. I just don't know what the timing on it is. And, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be that one will be a straight reprint, uh, other than obviously some errata fixes. And it'll bring, we'll bring everything up to the latest TEC, latest rules, latest charts, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it'll be a more or less a straight reprint. Uh, well, the one caveat is like we've issued a couple of counters in um, some of the supplements that modified the OOV, so that'll be in the new one. But if you already own the original with a supplement, you already have that. So it won't it won't you know change that. So but yeah I, I think so, I think it will go on there. I just I can't I can't tell you when because that's not in my Okay, so that's that's somewhat in the queue and you also have uh what Taiwan second so edition. Taiwan and Iran are currently in and so is supplement four, right? So yeah. Um, so what do you, what do, what do you feel like going to hit the streets first? Pretty much Taiwan. Probably Taiwan. That's what we're spending most of our time on. Um, okay. Very good. Like I said, we just, we just finished, um, getting all the vassal stuff ready so we can open it up for play testing. So if you want to play test Taiwan, let me know. There you go. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very that'll good. be, that'll be next. And cause we were, we were testing Iran and then we're like, you know what? That needs a little bit more work. Cause it, it's so different than the, the previous games. Uh, and, different in terms of the concept and the way things um, play out, not in the rules or anything necessarily. Right. Um, so it needs a little more tweaking from a VP standpoint um, uh -huh. to make sure that it's relatively competitive. Um, yep. But Taiwan was more of a, okay, it's a second edition. Yes. Things are changing, but it's probably a little bit simpler to test. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 It's nothing, it's nothing drastic. Right. Very different. Um, well, thank you very much. Mr. Oh, for, uh, for joining Thanks. us and uh, walking us through that, um, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoy. Uh, I, I know I would uh, enjoy the game too, and uh, I will uh, put it on a table soon myself. So awesome! We'll, see. well you and awesome. Tom can finish this one out. <laughs> yeah, we could, yeah, we yeah. could finish this because what's the, although the ground combat is pretty straightforward. It's similar to some other games. The nice touch in this one is how. Put how modifiers from all the air support and yeah. basically overall support yeah. uh, influence the outcome of combat because even with uh, poor odds, you can shift with mm -hmm. air, air support in your favor. If, even low odd mm -hmm. combat yeah. can Which be shifted nice. in your yeah. favor with all the air support you have. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want it to the to the level of being you know unrealistic, but it, it, it feels. It no, feels no, right. but but you you yeah. can you can have very low like you, you yeah. can have low odds on your end, but you can if survive you have enough support. Least. You can right. survive yeah. it. Yeah. 
you you can shift it in your favor with just right. the modifiers right. from it, but it needs to yeah. be seen how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, great time, yeah. and uh, we'll do it again sometime. Uh, maybe right. with the release of uh, one of the things we spoke of would be great. Oh, there so, you go. Yeah, awesome. So, all right, all right, take all right, care, guys. Thank you.